What's going on, guys? This podcast is brought to you by manscaped.com forward slash RBP. And I just want to let you know about the Lawnmower 4.0. Valentine's Day is coming up. So get your girls to put it on the list and get you the Manscaped 4.0. Get the beard trimmer, get the ball deodorant, get the lip balm, get the boxers, get everything. And if you use code RBP, you get 25% off. I'm going to show you guys the website really quickly. If you go to manscaped.com forward slash RBP, you can check out all the cool stuff they have. They have the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the Lawnmower 4.0 with the detachable head where you can put the shaver on. And then you can also get the Performance Package 5.0 that has the boxers. It has the crop soother. It has everything in it, the nose trimmer and all that. So guys, get to Manscaped, support the podcast, support Manscaped for sponsoring us. Use code RBP at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Like that. Poopy McPoopy Get pants. Get out <laughs> now. <laughs> What's up, poops? Get out, mom. <laughs> How are you, Mike? No, that's not my name. How are you, McPoopy? No, I don't like calling you Poopy fucking. Get out of here. How are poops. you, Mike? <laughs> I'm good, man. How I just into uh, I How? just into bespectacled life. Not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, it's do starting we, to suit you. Do you wear those mm-hmm. all the time, Mike? Or do you ever just do you ever just wear them for certain things? Like no, I wear them like on and off all day, different times. So I get used to them. Are they corrective? Yeah, for, like I have astigmatism, so they just like my eyes get kind of weird, especially at the really? gym for some reason. Right in those lights, like the fluorescent lights all day, my fucking eyes are they're done by the end of the day. Really? It's like what happens? They get tired. Yeah, like crazy, and everything's really, really fucking bright. Like, oh, I get it's that. wild. Anything else, Paul? You know, I get that. I why are you, you know what paul why, i think I what think is you, this uh, what is the screen i'm looking at why am i seeing why do i change my screen because it's whenever you talk i see a big version of you and i see three oh, small people go are you on a laptop go yeah, up go to, to the view t- the top right corner click view and then click gallery got it yeah that's better oh fuck that's weird paul how are you doing oh. Good for you, how you, doing? you, are you Did you eat some? Did you eat some candy before you I came on? A little cap. <laughs> little cap. <laughs> What'd you say? A little cap. Had a little cap. Okay. A cap? Yeah, yeah, not not that cap, Mike. A different oh, cap. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mushroom cap. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little one. Just a little guy. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, fuck. Well, we're starting off on a on a good note here. I don't know any, anything to say. Um, <laughs> so let's go to questions. Next week. Let's go to that, questions. That's time for questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has never happened before. I literally have nothing to say. Um, no, I was going to ask you: Are you still on your fucking diet? Me? Yeah, you. Yep. Perfect today. Yeah, but when was it? you? Had, you had a couple. This is the fucked up part. He tells me today, Mike. He's like, I had a couple handfuls of crackers yesterday. I'm like, like who? Do, what does that mean, though? Like, you just walked into the kitchen, you opened a bag of Ritz, and you just grabbed a couple handfuls of crackers, stuffed them in your mouth, and went back to bed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> who, does, who does that? Of all, of all things that, of all things to cheat with, there's fucking crackers. Well, I'll try not to have any sugar right now. He thinks, you know old, he thinks that's when you know you're an old white man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah, definitely. When you even have crackers in your house, kids, <laughs> kids. What kind, of, what kind of? Yeah, what kind of crackers are they? Like, it's that matters. Well, my daughter likes um these little uh they're like little pita um savory uh chips because she I likes know. them. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, so you know a handful is probably about twenty five to thirty, <laughs> uh, especially if you crunch them together a little bit. So <laughs> all I yeah, picture is like all I, all I yeah. picture is cracker dust like in your fist. <laughs> He's Doubling. wiping it on his leg as he goes upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't count. That didn't count. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that was your break. That was, you broke and you broke when you were sick. So you kind of fucked up twice in the last I didn't week. break when I was sick. You had fucking Chick Fil A. You shouldn't be oh, calling right, anybody yeah. out for breaking from. Wait, the, wait, wait! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit from the my picture fault. that I received on the weekend. <laughs> I'm gonna admit my faults. Well, what picture? I didn't, I didn't uh, hear so any been, of this. So I've been doing. So most people 
that people who were watching last week know I've been doing like a ketovore. I, I like to, I don't like to put any labels on it because I don't like labels. I don't like labels. <laughs> no, no, don't like to be painted to a corner. No, because someone's going to be like, oh, that's not keto. And then somebody else can be like, that's not carnivore. And so, listen, basically, I'm doing extremely low carb to the point where, like, probably my only carbs are from vegetables and a little bit of barbecue sauce on my steak. Uh huh. Is it so, uh, Ronnie Coleman uh, barbecue sure, sauce sure. stuff? No, no, sure, not sure. like not like a Ronnie Coleman barbecue sauce. Like a little, <laughs> okay, but that was one night. <laughs> you don't look happy, at least. So, so at at the New Jersey appearance that we did, uh, I had allotted myself a cheat meal every Saturday. So Saturday night, we're like we're gonna go for sushi. I'm like, all right, well, that's obviously a ton of carbs because I'm gonna have the rice. So I had sushi on Saturday night, but then where I fucked up was Sunday night after the meet and greet, we all got Cheesecake Factory. I didn't get any dessert, though. I only got two entrees. So... <laughs> yeah, two <Way> better. <laughs> <laughs> Caloric it's wise. Like double right? the calories, but I didn't get well, <laughs> Wait a minute. Those motherfuckers got cheesecake and shit. At least I like stayed away from the sugar sugar. I just what got... did you get there? I got, a, I got a penne. I really was craving pasta, so I got penne with like a mushroom sauce and chicken. And I got a shepherd's pie, which was fucking Whoa. awesome. Yeah, I haven't had that in a long yeah. time. Yeah, the shepherd's pie was super good. So then I was done. I ate that, and I was like, "I don't." Ben offered me some cheesecake. I was like, "No, nah, I'm good." So anyway, so then I got back on track the next day. So I've been back, but you know it's fucked up. I lost weight when I got back. I'm down. I'm down from two seventy five to two sixty in like two weeks. What? what? Yeah, yeah. I'm down to two sixty this morning. Isn't that crazy? What and I'm back. Uh, twenty milligrams of Anavar. Really? <laughs> That's okay. And ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> the MP and twenty-five milligrams of Cytomel. Micrograms, Good micrograms, sir. micrograms. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> and Ozempic. And... No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> <Don't be wrong>. <laughs> and... <laughs> Not doing Ozempic. I only do Ozempic once. I didn't like it. Um, and I'm doing two. I use a GH. Nice. That's that's it. That's it. Swear. That's the cat. That's pretty much natural. That's like, yeah. I mean, it's, that's not really all. That's not really all. Really two I use is like what your body would normally produce if you're. Yeah, you're just. I'll tell you. There's, doing, gr there's girls watching this levels. right now that do more than that. I know, sure. right? <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking right. <laughs> no but you know what i don't even know if it's worth it anymore because the one thing i have noticed being on like no carbs and ben says ben told me that this would go away after a little while like my body would get used to it but my fucking strength is in the toilet yeah like i was doing oh, dumbbell yeah. i was doing dumbbell rows with 70 pound dumbbells today well do you, do you plan on doing this for a long time are you going to start introducing carbs around workouts again or something well the only reason i would keep doing it is if my blood blood work shows that it's working because the main reason I'm doing it is because I've seen people with kidney issues. I've seen all of their kidney issues get better. Not no other diet has shown that except, mm. except for like a carnivore diet or at least a low carb diet, no carb diet. So I want to see what happens to my um, kidney numbers first. If they continue to improve, then I'll stay on the diet. Yeah. Um, if they only improve slightly and it's just a matter of if they're getting better more because I lost weight than it is because of the diet then I'll probably reintroduce a little bit of carbs, but I want to get most of the fat off my body before I even think yeah. of that. Yeah. Like I'd like to, I'm 260 now. I'd like to get down to like 245 and see how it looks. Yeah. Well, cause, cause right now I'm just skinny fat. Like all my muscles are fucking flat and like, I look, it just looks like shit. <laughs> so I'm like, you're going to do, you're gonna do classics. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think by, by the time I'm done this whole thing. So we'll see. But um, I will say this for anybody who's thinking about trying it. I feel phenomenal and my production is my, my like productivity through the day is through the roof. Yeah. Like I've never, like, I don't feel lazy anymore. I don't feel sluggish. I like when I have to do something, I don't like put it off. I just get up and do it. So there's a lot of benefits other than like just fat loss. Yeah. And that's what most people say about it when they, when they use that diet, that yeah. uh, mentally they feel great. Physically they feel great. Just you lose pumps in the gym, you lose some strength in the gym. It's a yeah, trade off. But Ben said, yeah, Ben said after a little while, though, that starts to like, I don't know if your body resets itself or what the scientific basis of it is. But Ben said, you kind of come back to a baseline after a little while. Okay. Okay. Like, like initially it's a shock to the body, but then he said his work, like you saw, I think he put up a video today. He's squatting five plates. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It's not, I don't think it's taking that much away from him. True. So we'll see. 
but uh also the digestion too digestion's a lot better like that's a big thing for me so i don't know and and finally like i know there's a lot of people that watch us that have like anxiety and depression and shit it's like night and day for me like mental health wise i wake yeah. up i wake up feeling refreshed and like i don't go through like highs and lows throughout the day i'm like more stable mentally yeah and those energy fluctuations affect mood a lot yeah yeah so there's a lot of uh I don't want to be one of those guys who's like, oh, you got to do carnivore. But I'm like, it's working so far. So anyway, yeah. um, what's going on, Mike? How are you? Good. I just got back from doing a bloodlet and getting some Botox at the same time. It's a killer I, combo. I thought you looked great. Exception, exceptionally great. <laughs> He's putting a filter on his fucking thing. That's why. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he got yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally told me what it was. What a... Uh... What are you, um, how often are you doing Botox? You did Botox last time you were on here. Do you know your... the, the girl that I go to? She's like a nurse, like owns a medi spa place. So she does my bloodlets for me. Mm -hmm. And then since I was there, she just touched me up, you know, so you you try to, here? To keep the kid looking fresh. Yeah. You know, I thought about it before. <laughs> yeah, you need it, man. That wrinkle on your forehead's like a pack of hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's 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 uh those are like battle scars, Mike. Those uh those tell a story. What what story do they tell? A lot of, a lot of years, a lot of stress, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of anguish. One kid, two kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are you trying to do, Mike? You're trying to make sure your face doesn't move at all, or what? Yeah, I don't want people to know what emotion I'm emoting <laughs> when I look <laughs> paralyzed <laughs> is he happy I don't know <laughs> can't tell um, no I just got it I got it done because I had to do the bloodlet because I'm trying to I'm working on getting my hemoglobin down because it's uh it's high it's not as it's not crazy high it just needs to be lower and it's like just trying to figure out what that is that's causing that like obviously I'm aware of what I put in my body that could be causing that but i'm not doing i'm not doing the doses i used to do anywhere near what i used to do why don't you tell so us what those dose, why don't you tell us what those doses are <laughs> yeah so they're i no. just you guys just, <laughs> you guys just quiz me I, I just told you guys my whole stack come on hey, i'm an open book no i'm like uh, right now i'm only on 200 milligrams because i'm trying to make this i'm trying to see how i can adjust this issue with the yeah. red blood cell count right so i'm I'm on 200 milligrams of test just every, other, every other day. <laughs> every other day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> micro, micro, micro dosing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I do that. Like, and then I do 200 grams of 200 milligrams of Primo. Okay. But like real Primo, not like shit Primo that's underground. Yeah. Crap. But wait a minute with, with Primo though. And this is, I don't know, like I'm not a drug expert or whatever, but like with Primo, don't you need to do it every other day? I don't think so. It's an anti. Oh, okay. But normal isn't normal primo like a one day half life or whatever the fuck it's called? Like the ester on it, isn't it short? I don't know. I know it's an enanthate. I just shoot it once a week. Okay. I take it all in one dose. But yeah, so I've been trying to figure out what it is because then there was like a, this talk of like, oh, the because I've I have sleep apnea, but I've been using my I've been using my mask and I've been getting like crazy. I've been getting like 99s out of 100 on this fucking thing. Like the mask readout is like positive all the time. So the guys I deal with are like, there's got to be something with your sleep because that's that's what's jacking it up. Well, blah, blah, you're on such low doses. And I'm like, so I put, I, I don't know if you've seen these apps. You can put it beside your bed and it listens to the noises you make when you sleep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have a fart. So I did that. I, yeah. I did that. <laughs> and I like, and I snored for a total of like 11 seconds one night. Like huh. it wasn't even a snore. It was just a louder, yeah. a louder breath. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, obviously it's not that dude. So like, yeah. well, why are you, so sorry, before we go on. Hi Seth. How are you? What's going on guys? We got some new stock in. I want to tell you guys about, if you go to hostile.com and you check out our new releases section, these are some of my favorite pieces. We have the new ethos hoodie, which is a lightweight hoodie. We have it in different colors, black, khaki, brown, and dark moss which is really kind of like a military green and then if you go back we have another one of my this is probably my absolute favorite which is kind of a lightweight thermal it is a little bit baggier than normal so if you want it not so baggy size down on it but we have black athletic heather gray forest green steel blue and flat red hostile.com 
check new drops. Also, next week, we have more Blue Shark Gummy in stock. And Bloodshot is coming back soon, too. Sorry, guys, for the delay. We've had such a massive increase in demand for Hostile that we had to kind of revamp things, and we're going to be all caught up, and things will not be out of stock uh, for so long ever again. Thank you guys for the support, and on to the show. Gentlemen, uh, it's good to see you all. <laughs> long time no see. I know, Seth. How you Sorry been? For, my for, everybody, uh, for everybody watching, Seth is filling in for Ian today because Ian is in Bangkok with the Lady Boys. Bangkok. Yeah. Is he really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he sent us a picture with some lady boys. No, I'm just, no, I'm just <laughs> that a sexcation. What's he doing over there? No, he took uh, for Melissa's birthday. He bought her a trip to Thailand. No shit. So they're going to, I think, Bangkok for a day or two or something like that, and then they're going to Kirby. I think it's called. What's that? I don't know. It's like a. Is it? You like know more private, about it, Mike. It's like a private beach resort they're going to or something. Yeah. No shit. I'm they're writing going... it down because I'm gonna look it up. Well, I'll talk to Ian about it because apparently it's absolutely beautiful. He's going for yeah. two weeks. He's going for two weeks. Listen, I'm I, I'm going to say that Ian is probably somebody that is I don't know him very well. Yeah. I'm glad that we had the podcast. That's that first time I've ever talked to him. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, no, I'd imagine he is one particular motherfucker. No, <laughs> like no. I mean, no, no, no. no. He's no. back. He's very, he's very, very smart. He's very, very. Well, that's intelligent. what I mean. That's why I, I, I assume like he's very smart. He's very intelligent, but. He's kind of like a, a go along to have fun wherever we're going. He's yeah. not he's not very particular. No. Like when we like we went we went to a cottage this weekend, the four the not this weekend, sorry, this summer. This past yeah. summer, the four of us. And we're like, where are we staying? And like Ian was like, I don't care. Let's just go. Like he didn't give a shit. So like I picked out the Airbnb and then like I think when we went, where else did we go? Where he was like, I don't give a fuck where we stay, I don't care what we do, I don't care where we eat. Yeah, he don't care. He just, wants to, he just Olympia. wants to he, he just wants to hang out. Yep. I, I would say, though, Seth, that I think when it comes to Melissa, he wants to make sure that she's 100% okay. happy. So he's probably a little more particular about this trip than, like, the stuff we're doing together. He doesn't really yeah. care. He doesn't really care about us. Yeah. yeah. He's, but, I mean, I just took him as someone who was super particular about what he what he was like. Yeah. Like, very structured. Like, because I know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty structured and particular yeah. about things. And yeah. I'm assuming you are, too. And... You gentlemen are as well, and especially from being a bodybuilder. I just thought he was like that. No, you know the movie, you know what he reminds me of? You know, the, and I think he does this purposely. Like, I don't know if Ian had like a shift somewhere, but I almost feel like it's a conscious thing. You ever see the movie Yes Man? Yeah. Where he like, <laughs> he decides one day, like, I'm just going to say yes to everything. <laughs> That's kind of how Ian is. He's like, just like, sure, let's do it. Let's go. Have, and he's like the fun guy because he's never like. Never complains, never cares where we're going. He's just like, let's yeah. go have fun. Yep. That's a pretty fucking cool quality. Yeah, That's man. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually jealous of it because I'm like, I want to know where we're going, what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, dude, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, um, with, yeah, anything. Before you came on, we were talking about Mike's uh, hematocrit. Hematocrit. Yeah. Yeah, mm. because hemoglobin he's, hematocrit. Hemoglobin. How's that but, going? So I want to ask before, before we get any further i just want to ask you mike if you're not snoring or whatever having any sleep apnea why are you wearing the mask or are you not because you're wearing the mask no because i'm wearing it yeah okay 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 but they I, say that, I violently they, snore without it okay but they say the mask raises your red blood cell count well they're saying that like guys who have sleep apnea like who are snoring all the time not getting enough oxygen while they sleep that's like could be a key, an indicator of like elevation of red blood cell count for some reason so okay. now that i'm sleeping with the mask and i have been for a while everything's come down like even my blood pressure and everything right so but you I haven't have you found any struggle wearing it because i mean i've tried paul knows okay. it tried. took me yeah. a year me too. Took me, me too it took yeah. me a year to get used to it what kind of mask are you using mike i use a full face mask now me too i use i, I use a nose like a nose covered one before and i used pillows before yeah but the full yeah. face mask is the most relaxing for me that's the one that I use too, but I still don't like it that much. Okay, wait. Do you get up in the middle of the night to piss, Mike, or no? Barely ever, no. Oh, because of the mask. Yeah. Fuck. Get man. out of here. You don't wake up to take a piss. I get up like three like, times. Maybe like maybe like <laughs> one or maybe like I'm one or two there, days dude. out of the week. Really? Maybe one or two. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think I drink too much. Too. I think I drink too much before bed. Yeah, yeah. I do too, because I'm always trying to catch up on liquids near the end of the day. Yeah. During, I'm thirsty. In, yeah, earlier in the day I'm busy, so I'm like I'm not taking enough water. Mm-hmm. And then I get thirsty near the end of the day and I drink like a gallon before bed. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
I do the same shit. You get the same problems, right? Yeah. I know you... getting older though, I feel like I feel like my bladder is getting different as I get older. It's starting don't... to make me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, there's a procedure right, you not, can get. It's not there's a bladder. procedure you can get for that. <laughs> what is it? Uh, I forget what it's called right now. Um, but I was watching a podcast Thank once. You. Thanks. And uh, Paulie Shore was really talking about what he had. It's really helpful, Paul. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> There's a the Paul, you can look it up. Uh, um, all right, this is my blast. first time on a podcast with Paul. Maybe I shouldn't bring certain things. I'm assuming that's what so there's a, right now. So, guys, there's this procedure. I don't know the name, but there is something. <laughs> Type in procedure. On yeah, I'll, if you, I'll, I'll remember the name of it by the end of the podcast. <laughs> okay, we'll see. No, uh, um, Seth, I know you've had some health issues. Have you ever had an issue with your red blood cell count? That is my main issue. Me That's too. your main. It, that was so, the main issue I had was hematocrit, hemoglobin, and uh, my uh, resting heart rate. Uh, my blood pressure was up, but my resting heart rate is really what scared me the most. Hematocrit, hemoglobin. What, what? You know, you can you can fucking you you know if you're going to get phlebotomies or you just go regularly to donate blood. Uh, that can that that's something that you can take care of w- through that. If you don't do it, you're gonna fuck yourself up. Just do it. What do was it your- make it a regular thing? What was your red resting heart rate at? My resting heart rate uh, regularly was around 100 beats a minute. Yeah, we were just talking last week about this. Me and me and Mike were both like low 90s. Me too. Yeah, so that was really what drove me to do the functional workouts because yeah. Dr. Prisk was like, hey, dude, time to cut the shit. And that's whenever like my fucking, I was like, oh my God, my life is over. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's like, just get yourself together. And, uh, but he's like, he's like, Seth, he's like, you need to take this serious. And he's, and I'm like, so like, I, this is a big deal. And he's like, you're too young for this to be a thing. Take right. care of yourself. Right. Um, and that's where the whole functional and fuckable and 50% vegan thing came from. Cause I was like making fun of it to make, you know, some light and some, some yeah. fun part of my day because this sucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, that's whenever I was like, okay, got to get my resting heart rate down. And it was just a matter of doing cardio and eating a better diet, more sound, more balanced, less meathead esque. Let's focus on the phlebotomies. Let's yep. start getting your red blood cell count down, and then um, just so it's gonna take time. So me and Mike were talking last week about this, and we both kind of agreed and established that some long duration cardio or even some hard cardio helped us both get our heart rates down into like the. Hey, he's in the. You're Mike. You said you're in the seventies now, right? Yeah, in the morning I'm in like the 60s. Yeah, I went down to like low 80s when I was doing some running, uh, but it happened immediately. It was after like two weeks. I noticed like immediately my heart rate started to come down and relax. But what? sorry, just no, go what, ahead. I, what I was gonna say is, Mike's still having trouble getting his uh, red blood cell count down, even though his heart rate's better and his all that's better. So, do you did you have did you have any struggle getting the red blood red blood cell count down after the I... blood pressure and the heart rate? Dr. Presk uh, and I went after it in the beginning. Let's just go get some phlebotomies done and let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. And then whenever it was like, it, it immediately helped a little bit, but then it just kind of hung out still relatively high. Yeah. And he's like, hey, let's get aggressive with it and see what happens. Let's see if we get aggressive with it and it dropped. So I was doing, I went and got a phlebotomy done every week for about Shit. a month. Wow. Oh yeah. It's like, let's get aggressive and see how it is. Let's make sure you're eating. Let's make sure your diet's on point. Um, and we did, we did one every single week for a month and that's whenever it just went fucking. Well, how much did you take? How much did you take every time? Uh, we were taking, uh, we were taking a pint every time and it wasn't it that it was a pint every once a month. And that, you know, for the first one we did, we did it the first week and the second week, and then we did it once a month and that's whenever it just kind of leveled out and he's like, let's go in hard. So, um, uh, Seth, when you went in hard on it every week, mm-hmm. did you notice any health issues? Like, does that, I don't know what that does. Like, do you mm-hmm. notice anything different about your daily life? No, I feel better. And then after the, after the, at the, uh, um, at the end of it, like the last time I got it, that's whenever I was like, Hey, feeling a little drained now. And he's like, okay, yeah, he's like, yeah. let's, let's see how every, let's see how you go. Don't train for the next couple of days. And just kind of recover from it. But, you know, we were looking at the resting heart rate. My resting heart rate was still in the the mid 80s, mm-hmm. um, high high 80s. And that's when I was like, okay, he's like, dude, he's like, you need to start working on cardio. He's like high intensity, duration. And then he's also, he's like breathing. He's like, just sit there and breathe. And I'm like, holy fuck, you sound like the mouth tape breather people. Yeah. He's like, there's a thing to it, Seth. Yeah. 
I'm like, okay. So wait, so, can, can you explain what exactly the breathing technique you wanted you to do was? Well, no, just nose breathing. Oh, no just don't breathing. just don't breathe in your mouth anymore. Stop, stop doing all the. <sighs> that has that much effect. Well, it, you want to. So what's going to happen is with the breathing, it's going to help control your heart rate. Okay. So whenever you're doing, whenever, whenever I was doing cardio, he's like, Seth, he's like, while you're doing your cardio, I want you to, I want you to just become one with your breathing, like work on your breathing as much as you are doing your cardio. Okay. He's like, you're oh, try and breathe through your nose. Yeah. 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 Stop breathing out of your mouth. And he's like, if that's too much, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Like mm -hmm. just keep going, focus on your breathing. Mm -hmm. He's like, your breathing is going to help control your heart rate. The harder you do cardio, the yeah, more yeah. respirations, the higher your heart rate will get. He's like, but steady state, do 30 to 40 minutes, steady state and mm -hmm. focus on your breathing the okay. whole time, okay. low impact, steady state. That's, and then I went from, you know, the 40 minutes and I always did cardio, but never like on the breathing. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. 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 And well, then we were, he's like, work yeah, up to yeah. an hour. Yeah. Yeah. We so, were doing that. We were doing that in jujitsu because we would have, when me and Paul were doing jujitsu yeah. for a while, we were, we were getting fucked up. We we're like, yeah, and our, dude, and, you're breathing. A little bit, yeah, and, yeah. And, and our coach would constantly be like, dude, through your nose, through your nose, through your nose. And you're like, you're dying for air. You're like, yeah, just this Stop. mouth. Trying to get a mouthful of fucking air so I'm not dying. <laughs> so like, he's, like, oh, he's like, through your nose. But then I remember, um, remember that sleep? Was it, I don't know if it was a breathing doctor or a sleep doctor they had on Rogan? Jamie, Jamie Lester. And he was saying that something, I'm sure I'm going to butcher this. But he said something about having receptors in your sinuses that allow the oxygen to yeah. get into your body faster than if you breathe through your mouth. It oxygenates your blood better, I think. Yeah, something like that. So I guess it makes sense. Breathe through your nose. I haven't yeah. I haven't looked too far into the science of that because I think like there's a certain point with everything. Whenever you go from like, hey, this is super beneficial to me yeah. to becoming somewhat like, hey, I don't this is too far. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. every, every single person on the internet today is taking something way too far. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. these fucking assholes. I just saw one. I, I'm, Paul went I'm to heaven. Fucked it up again. <laughs> <Are you> having... <laughs> Fuck it up. Somebody told, like, there was this one where he's like, I think it was Mark Bell posted it. The guy's talking about not eating apples. He's like, don't eat apples. Uh, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, he's like, not the same apples they used to be from back in the day. I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah. Nothing's the same as it was back in the day. I know. I but know. no, you're right. That that is like that's the nature of our like life currently because of social media. Yeah. Everybody that's why we were just talking before you came on. I said I'm doing like a no carb diet. But I'm like, I'm hesitant to call it. Are you are you gonna do it? Are you doing it now? Did you I, do it? I have been for a couple of weeks. I had a couple cheat meals on the weekend. That How'd it good. go? <laughs> two entrees. <laughs> I had two entrees. <laughs> <laughs> I've How dropped the first week. I, I've dude, I've dropped 15 pounds in like two weeks and I feel phenomenal. Oh my God. You but the point, the, the point is, and I haven't really done that much cardio. The point is, um, I'm, I'm careful to be like, I'm keto or I'm carnivore or I'm what. Cause like people just run with this shit. And yeah. I'm like, look, I'm basically just no carb and I feel great. That's, that's all I'm saying to people. So, but yeah, it, it, that's the nature of social media, you, right? You got to put it, you got to put a tag on it, dude. It's not real. I know. It doesn't something. count. Yeah. Unless you call it something. Me and Ben got an argument because I said, I said, it's kind of, pe uh, it's kind of like paleo. And he goes, nope, you're using barbecue sauce. I'm like, what the fuck is right? <laughs> yeah, you use that stuff in paleo times. I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I use a tablespoon of barbecue sauce a day. He's like, not, doesn't count. I'm like, oh my God. Doesn't count, dude. Not natural. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Anyway. Um. All right. So Mike, what do you think? Are you going to go in every week? Are you going to talk to your doctor about that or what? Maybe that's the way to go. I mean, yeah, I might try it. I can, it's, it's easy for me to do. I've done three in the last, like, I want to say month and a half. So, oh, so you're almost there anyway. Yeah. So okay. but like I kind of did, I did two in a burst and then I took two weeks off and then I did this one today. So I might just go, I'm, I have a, I have a, hemoglobin tester at home like a insulin tester there's a hemoglobin home one you can buy oh, I didn't oh really know I, can, oh, I didn't yeah. know i get those yeah yeah you can order it on amazon so it's kind of like a weird how, collection how, how how close do you, do you believe it to be what kind of uh like how accurate is it accurate yeah it seemed accurate i mean it went down to it gave me a reading that was like lower after i did like it was when i first used it at home it was like 180 or was it 190 at the time 
and then I when I did the two the two bloodlets, it went back. It went down to like one eighty. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, and he then, was about seven points right away. I think. Yeah. So then I uh, I haven't used it since then, but it's a different testing. It's not like your it's like your insulin, but you're you prick your finger and then there's like these glass tubes or like plastic really thin tubes and you touch the blood and it pulls the blood up into it and yeah. then you tap then you tap the the thing on the on the meter and it reads it it gives oh, you so it's like a so it's like a blood sugar monitor yeah but it's a little more like you can't just tap it you have to like for some reason put a certain amount on yeah yeah with yeah. this like with you this fucking tube Amazon? What are you writing, Seth? Yeah. What's what's the name, Mike? Do you are you right, looking for the name of it? I'm, I'm right. I'm taking notes, dude. I want to know. This is this. Is, I gotta go. I can go get it. Hold on. All right, let him go get it. So many people like. I mean, it's easy to get obsessed with these things. You know how people get super obsessed with their heart rate monitors on their yeah. watches and shit. I don't do that. I just at, twice periodically day, check my heart rate in the morning, see where it is, yeah. and then in the evenings when I sit down. Because during the day, if I had it on here, dude. With work, if I'm if I have a I fucking know. crazy meeting, dude, I don't need to look down and be like, look, it's 96 beats a minute right now. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> fuck, I didn't think it was that bad. I gotta go to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that like people it's super easy to get excited or, or yeah. get too into it. So <clears throat> I don't know. It's one of those things that like I'd like to check it, like see where I'm at. If I gain three pounds or five yeah. pounds, is it different at this time? Like, yeah, I just like my own science experiments. No, I don't blame mm-hmm. you. I listen, even with my um my heart uh, not my heart rate sorry my um my blood pressure like there's some guys that check it like twice a day i just i check it yeah. like two times a week yeah and i'm like that's good i just need to know a kind of idea of how i'm doing i don't get obsessive with shit yeah just make sure i mean it's easy to like it's the same thing with people in the scale i'm like hey bud pump the brakes on the fucking scale two three times a day don't do that You're <laughs> gonna drive yourself crazy. <laughs> what's it called cjoy s-e-j-o-y for those listening on audio, it's S E J O Y. It's a it's a red blood cell count meter, or hem- hemoglobin, hemoglobin testing system. Hemoglobin <laughs> testing system sounds more professional than <laughs> red blood cell count meter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's meathead, meathead terminology. What's that <laughs> thing you got to test your blood your, your red blood cell count? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Seth, I want to talk to you. Last week before we left. There's yeah. two two things you got into. One more serious and one more fun. Which one do you want to go with first? I'm leave it up to you, dude. Okay, we'll go with the fun. <laughs> okay. So how many animals have you killed off the face of the earth? Uh not many. <laughs> not too many. Uh, only a couple dozen. species have you wiped out. <laughs> only a couple, no, a couple dozen. Only a couple dozen. As of recently. Why um, can't you just where happened oh. to Paul? Paul fucking logged off or what? One he second. Like what I'm saying. He didn't maybe doesn't like hunting. Uh I he bet likes you meat. Yeah, he does. <laughs> no. Um wait, he's back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the main question I want to ask you is where did he go? He just I just hit a oh there he is. Okay. Let's ask him what happened. Oh, boy. The... Fucking Dell's Dell's really fired up to me. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, what happened to you, man? That light was killing me. I had to log off for a minute. What do you mean? <laughs> that, I don't know. That shut light everything had. down. Why did you have to, but wait, why do you have to log off the computer to change the light? I had to reset. What? There's the a light connected to the computer. Outlet. Pardon? No, no. It's a, there's a light in here. But for some reason, I changed my. I just moved my monitor a little bit, and all of a sudden, it was like this bright light on me, and I couldn't adjust. So, are you saying every time the light gets bright, you're gonna have to turn it off and turn it back on? It seemed to work. <laughs> it was effective yes it was yeah right <laughs> it's like begging your computer screen <laughs> you're my favorite person i swear to god um, I know. okay I know. so so i have to i uh i have to ask why can't you go to the grocery store and get meat like the rest of us why do you have to kill these poor animals mm. <laughs> Well, not, not that they're not being killed anyway. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay, wait, for people watching, I'm just talking with him because he gets so much hate on his Instagram from the fucking people that don't understand that hunting is better than fucking. Okay, Listen, go ahead. It is It is something that I have, I've wanted to do out West excursions. Like I've killed deer here in Western PA. You kill, you go, you go raccoon hunting. You do simple, basic shit around Western PA, turkey hunting, all those things. But I wanted to go out West and kill. Uh, an elk like because it looks cool on instagram 
Well, uh, the guy that was <laughs> cool on Instagram, and I want to hey, yeah. fuck yeah. killing shit. Astonishing. Um, so <clears throat> I hit up a buddy of mine. His name's Zach Owens, and uh, I've been friends with him on Instagram for years. And I was like, "Hey, dude, can you take me elk hunting?" And he's like, "Dude, he's like, you you aren't going elk hunting next year." He's like, "You didn't draw a tag. It's really hard to draw a tag." Oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool." And this was in this was in 2022. 2020. Wait, 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 Seth. Sorry, We're, let's let's pretend everybody here doesn't know anything about hunting. What does okay. it mean? What does it mean to draw a tag? Uh, so what you're gonna do is like in order to get uh, out of state, like for each in each different state, they operate different. Okay, in Idaho you have to go into like a drawing online. You would log in to the website and you wait in line. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And okay. then if your number, if you're like, you got to get on there at a certain time and then you're in line. Okay. And then you just sit there for X amount of hours on that website. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like you just trickle down and you'll see it happen. Yeah. I, yeah. to get mine, I got mine in 2023 okay. to get my tag. I waited. I was on my computer for eight hours. <laughs> Holy fuck! Why oh yeah, you... it was ridiculous. So you, but... so so go back. So you reached out. He told you you couldn't do it. Gonna go from there. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. He's like, uh, but he's like, I can take you bear hunting, and I'm like, that's, that's get what the I'm really fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, he's like, yeah. yeah. He's like, you okay with that? And I'm like, yeah, dude. I can. Okay. You can eat bear. I'm down. I want to eat a bear. Like fuck yeah. And he's like, Seth. He's like, I don't know you too well. Okay. He's like, I just know you from Instagram and you're a pretty cool guy. We shoot the shit. He's like, if you kill a bear, it's a predator. You do predatory hunting, you're going to get a ton of hate. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm eating it. Yeah. I'm going to eat the bear. Like, so I'm cool with it. Like it's my, it's food for me. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you're still going to get a lot of hate though, bro. And I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. I was like, fuck it. I want to go hunting in the mountains. Yeah. It's a lifelong experience. So what, um, what, mount, what mountains, Seth? So we went into, we went into Idaho. He doesn't tell anybody where he goes hunting. You don't tell anybody where you go hunting. You oh, tell okay. fuck. Sorry, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. no. Like, yeah, Paul, don't ask inappropriate questions. Yeah. Get your shit together. <laughs> my, my I have so. pictures. <laughs> I'll just okay, say you're we shut went, up. We went hunting <laughs> for elk this past, uh, last year in, uh, fall of 2023. Yeah. And I'm like taking pictures of the landscape. Like, I'm just like. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. a screensaver. Yeah. And he's like, hey, don't post that fucking picture. Really? I'm like, I was like, don't post the beautiful sunset. Yeah. And he's like, Seth, he's like, there are people that know that I'm hunting with you right now. Yeah. And he's like, they will be able to find out exactly where we are if you post that picture. Okay. Can you explain? I didn't know this Wait, either when Paul asked the question. Can you can you explain like the basis of all this? Like okay. why? So um the, you know how in the bodybuilding community we get very uh like possessive of what we do yeah. and we become territorial in a sure. sense sure. well sure. killing animals is very difficult in order to go hunting you need to know the animal better than anybody on the planet like people think that hunters are like horrible human beings they actually love the environment they love the animals they know more about these animals than anything and hunting elk is very difficult hunting yeah. bear very difficult it is not easy to do these things whenever we were whenever like so like you need to understand everything we're not just hiking up a mountain and you're like hey there it is we're gonna yeah, go get yeah. it yeah. no you got to understand the patterns of their day and in order to be good at it you have to put in legwork years and years of legwork yeah. and this guy he knows more about those mountains he knows as much about those mountains as all of us do about the gym Sure. Like, like it's so, it's directly right. correlated back to it. Years, a whole lifetime of experience. So I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to interrupt, but I'm just curious. So, um, when you say that, is it just like the movement patterns of the animals, the weather, the the like Two the winds, like all of that, everything, like the windages? Yeah. Okay, yeah. if yeah. you get winded by an animal, like depending on where you're going hunting. What I did in 2023, and when I went elk hunting, I went back country archery elk hunting okay so what that back country means is is you are going into like you are fucking hiking for tens of miles sure into shit where you're not going to see other fucking humans yeah. and you're hiking up mountains you're at nine thousand feet hiking up and down 10 15 20 miles a day yeah like into the into the fucking nothingness yeah yeah well, dude it's super if i didn't have him i don't think i'd go okay so let's go back for one second so when he says don't post that picture Mm -hmm. It's because he's kind of that's 
kind of his area and he doesn't want anybody to come there? Well, it's it, it, he worked <clears> for it. Dude, we from we left, we I flew into Boise yeah. and then we drove three hours into central Idaho, okay, on the roads. And then we drove an hour on back roads mm -hmm. to the camp. And then like where we camped out, we slept in tents and back yep. of his truck and shit like that in the bed. And yep. And then like and during the day, we would hike 10 to 15 miles. Did you over sleep and into the mountains? Did you sleep together in the bed of the truck? Uh no. Uh -uh. Okay. Oh, we, did in, <laughs> we did that in uh in for the bear hunt, we slept together in the You sleep had to hunt. You sleep had to tell had to tell. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. This dude, Zach's six foot four. The dude's a fucking terrifying monster. So, yeah. like, the pictures he and I got, like, dude, it's Danny DeVito. Yeah. I'm yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking Arnold. <laughs> so, um, you get, so you're, you sleep out in the camp and then you hike out 10, 15 miles. Mm -hmm. So, explain to me then. Let's go back now since we know all that. Explain to me the bear hunt because I didn't realize you went bear hunting. That's uh, actually more yeah. interesting to me. So, we went bear hunting um, in 2022 and uh, we go in. And again, it's because he's, he's it's those are it's his area yeah um and we went in at they uh you can do you can hunt bear in a couple different in a few different ways you bait bear if you do a bear bait you're bringing them in you're dragging them in and the whole reason you're doing a bear bait is to kill old big mature boars males okay. Okay. you want to kill old big bears yeah. they are very difficult to pull in you don't want to kill you know a sow especially a wet yeah. sow which would be a, a female that's nursing cubs yep. you don't do that um, or you could, uh, you could spot and stalk, which you're just tracking them down. Like we did with the elk. Like you just continue to follow them and yeah. their patterns, or you hunt them with hounds. You go into the mountains, you have your hounds and the hounds round them up and you fucking chase them down. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, we were going to do all three, depending on which one on, on how we got it. So the first was his bear bait. We went in a couple miles into, uh, his spot where the bear bait was and, you, you just got to check all the, make sure the thermals are right, which is the wind coming down the mountain or wind yeah. going up the mountain. So bears yeah. have an insane uh, sense of smell, they, yeah. but they can't see well. Right. Really? Like you could be 60, 70 yards away. They might not be they able to see you. you very well. Yeah, but, like, seen, they will, but they could smell you. Fucking, they could smell you yeah. from half yeah. a mile away. I've seen oh. that. I've seen that on hunting shows to so make sure you're not downwind from them, blah, blah, blah. Yep. All this oh, so, I mean, it, ton of different things come into play yeah. but uh, so we were going to sorry before you go on what are you baiting them with <laughs> it's the way he baits them is fucking wild huh. okay so he would bait the bears in um you so some people just use like a 55 gallon drum and fill it with fill it with uh honey uh, no uh <laughs> Yeah, so they uh, sugar bear fun. They'll fill it with bread. We need the fucking food. Uh, fucking stale bread. Yeah. They'll fill it with uh, like fish guts. Um, oh, okay, anything dead animals. Really power, shit. power, powerful smelling shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, but, I've read, I've read that too about bears. Okay, so the, yeah. he baited this bear. He creates a whole uh, cover for it, like a whole spot for it to come, not just once, but over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, when I say this shit is fucking rancid, it is absolutely disgusting smelling because it stinks and it drags them in. Right, and right, they're right. Able to continue right. to come in and come in. And on this bait, there were two massive bear, two massive right. black bear. Can I? And I'm sorry, then, I'm asking so many questions, but I'm just blown away by this. How too. far away are you from the bait? So what we wanted to do, I we wanted to do archery. Okay. okay. So what we did was we went up uh, the first night. It was uh, it was going to storm the next day. So we're like, let's go in. So we go up and we were about 25 yards away from the bait, hidden. And we were going to do archery. Okay. Well, he never came in. The, neither one of the boars came in. Um, so we were sat there and we were checking the thermals the whole time. You use like a, uh, like a dust spray that just a powder spray. You just put it in the air and see where the, the wind yeah, takes yeah. it. Yeah, that's a question. We sat there for about forty minutes. Nothing. Paul, Paul, Paul's got a question. Sorry, Seth. You guys got guns, though, right? Just in case things uh, go right. No, we right. went in. No, no guns. Uh, you got no guns at all. Uh, we had guns at the camp, but we went in just for uh, archery. But you're not carrying a gun just in case. No, we were good there. He had. We had one at camp, but just at that point where we were, it was an evening, and Paul's, bears... Paul's automatically out at this point. He's like, "Fuck hey, this!" Safety like... first. Safety <laughs> first. <laughs> so. We, uh, we, he, <clears throat> so then we were there, nothing. We were like, he's like, Hey, let's go back to camp. 
he's like, let's just get ready for the morning because a storm's coming tomorrow late morning. He's like, that fucking storm is going to throw the thermals for a whirl. So let's just come back in the morning. So we hike back out. And then uh, the next morning, we're like, we're very hesitant as going in because at 200 yards, we would stop, check the bait, see where it's at. Yeah. And then when we got to 100 yards out, um, we stopped and he's like, hey, he's like, I think that fucking bear's right there. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay couple, couple questions, please. Uh, when you say thermals, explain what exactly uh, what that is. Windages, just the just, windages. Just knowing that's the wind. Term, okay. That's a terminology that, that they use. It's just windage. Okay. So second, direction. yeah. The, the direction or the, that's it, right? The direction of the wind. Yeah. How, okay. like, so what'll happen is, is at certain times of the day, depending on like, um, depending on uh, the time of the day, the, the heat or how the sun is setting or what will take the wind, take it up the mountain Certainly. or yeah, take it yeah. back oh. down the mountain. And with the storm coming in, it can throw those for a loop yeah. and actually like have the opposite effect. Okay. So you pay attention to it the whole time. Second never question, the same. Second question oh. is, so he knew the land so well that you guys expected to see these two bears. Yes. Okay. And the third question is when he says they're right there, how does he know that? The same reason that you're like, I think I should be doing something different. This is just ineffective right now. It's just, due to gut feeling. It's, yeah. it's, he was just like, let's wait here. But we were a hundred yards out. He's like, and we had, and he brought in uh, his rifle because he's like, Hey, he's like, he's like, if that thing's that, if we can't get that 25 yards, he's like, I want you taking it out. So once we got to a hundred yards out, we had a good, we had a good spot on, on the, on the bait and we're sitting there and he's like, let's hang out. He's like, I think they're in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, so we're just sitting there super quiet. Like, mm -hmm. we're making a noise. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, sure enough, uh, my other buddy, Ryan, uh, he went with us. So it was me, Zach, Ryan, and Jay, our photographer. And Ryan's like, he's dead set there. And he looks over at us and he's like, he's there. And I'm like, holy fuck. Your heart, is your heart racing at this point? I could feel it in my throat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feel it in my throat. It immediately went up. And then Zach's like, he said, he's like, he's like, we're going to set up and shoot it with a rifle. He's like, I don't want a chance you trying to sneak in. I really want you to kill this, kill this bear. Yeah. He's like, I want you to get your first kill out here in the wilderness. Okay. I'm like, I'm doing Are you, it. are you bummed out at this point? Cause you want to shoot it with a, with your, uh, bow and arrow, or are you just um, like, are you happy no, just to do it? No, do because it. I trusted his judgment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I trusted it. And then once, uh, once the but once the bear became visual with our uh with our binoculars, like he's like, dude, he's like, this is a fucking massive bear. Hey, hey, when you're you're sitting saying you're nervous, are you nervous, excited, or are you like, if I miss, this thing's gonna kill me? Yeah. No, no, it won't kill you. No. No. It's it's a bear. Like I mean, you only have to be nervous about a a black bear if it's like if if it's a uh, if it's like a a sow like a wet sow. Yeah. Or if it it's if it's on term. one to get you, if it's really fucking hungry, then you got to be nervous. Right. More than likely they won't. And um, so at that point, like we're 100 yards out and then it was there eating. And then all of a sudden it quartered away. And I'm like, there's the shot. So I set up, took the shot and it didn't make a noise or anything because they say it, you usually will, 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 let, will let out a death cry, yeah. but it didn't. Yeah. And then like. 30 yards away just was laying down. behind a log. Holy shit. Happened Jeez. like that, dude. My heart was racing. It was crazy. It was super intense. And then I'm like, so then whenever we found out it was dead, um, we just fucking started rolling it down the hill and then started Quarter. skinning it and quartering it out. So you rolled it down. How far did you have to roll it down a hill? Not far. It was about, it was when you about... actually, let me go back before you got, before you rolled down the hill and you got there. You just see your, this is the first time you've seen a bear dead. in real life or up close? Uh, up close, like. Yeah, you've, close you've probably seen one at a zoo or something, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So what happens is with hunting where a lot of people have this misconception is, is that like it does something to you that you don't really understand because you've never done it. Like you just took the beating, you just took the life of an animal. Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty intense. Yeah. Like everybody, we all like eating steaks and burgers. But it's really intense when you take the life of an animal, like especially a big animal. One Something that like that, yeah. Like, yeah. You're like, ooh, this is a little bit much. And yeah. you're like, you see a deer, or you're like, man, that's what a cute deer. Oh, my God, this is so sweet. And then you're like, you just killed it. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's really intense. So what, what 
I gathered from all of it was like, whenever I went up to the bear, put my hand on it, said a prayer, thanked it for light, its life because I'm going to feed myself and my family with it. And I'm going to cherish this moment and understand that I took the life of an animal. And if I'm not appreciative of it, then I'm an asshole. Like that's so, why you say grace before dinner. Okay. Can you take me back? Take me back mm -hmm. to the scene for a minute. So you guys are walking up to this bear that you killed. Mm -hmm. Is it, and and I think either is okay. So don't be scared to tell me which way, but yeah. are you kind of like hooting and hollering and celebrating? Cause you got your first bear or are you more like, is it more like serene because you're like, Holy fuck, I killed my first bear. Serene. I, I mean, I was excited because I'm excited that I killed it very quickly. Yes. One shot through the heart made it 30 yards. It didn't run hundreds of yards. I didn't right. put a bad shot on it. Right. It was dead within a minute. Couldn't ask for anything more. So when you roll up to it, you say a prayer. Then you guys, from where you just say a prayer, then you start rolling it down the hill. And yeah, then you then we get it in a position. We wanted to take pictures and, and get pictures for it. And yeah. then after that, I was like, that's whenever like I got really excited because now I get to experience something that I've never experienced out West. And right. that's going to be skinning it, quartering it out and carrying it off a mountain. I'm what actually was... going to pack the meat out yeah. of a mountain and take it home. What was the weight of the bear? Yeah, I uh, didn't know the weight. We didn't weigh it because we didn't have anything, dude. It was it was three hundred plus. Paul, you yeah. realize, Paul, you realize you said yeah after like every question I've asked. <laughs> well, these are all questions I would ask myself. Like, yeah, 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 that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great, great job so far. Like, ask all the questions Thank I want to ask. <laughs> so it's Still uh, crossing stuff off the list as you yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what was the, sorry? What was the weight? It was, it was over 300. Uh, we didn't, I mean, that's what I'm, they told me, Zach was like, he's like, dude, he, so here's the thing that, that uh, Zach was like, he's like, Seth, he's like, you killed a once in a lifetime bear. He's like, this is a, it was a beautiful cinnamon color phase brown bear or black bear. Okay. So like it had like a, a brown cinnamon esque coat yep. Yep. and it's a black bear. So it's a color phase. Yes probably 50 50 out there and to have one like i did and it was a very old bear yeah. like it had a broken off tooth yeah like i mean like this thing has been around for a long time and he's like seth he's like you killed a once in a lifetime bear your did first you, time bear honey. did you keep a trophy thing i don't, I don't know that that's poor oh bad. yeah no i i'm full mount it's in my garage right now okay. I'm, I'm actually so, gonna have put in my new office so i know i know brown bears are heavier like a lot heavier so for brown bears black, are, brown bears are terrifying right so for black bears 300 is a big black bear uh, out west yeah there's, yeah, okay. there's much bigger bear uh like in west virginia there's bear that are 500 pounds mm -hmm. but it was the out west experience that i wanted to i wanted to experience okay so um, you, well, you roll it down the hill and then you start skinning it and quartering it mm -hmm. how far are you walking with all the meat uh that wasn't too far okay. uh we had about a mile and a half out um okay. so it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Um, it was still, it was still a hike, but it wasn't yeah. too bad. Um, but it's the, it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. we weren't very far from camp. Um, and then after that, that was our second or it was our second day up there in the mountains. So yeah. then we spent four and a half days with him driving around all over central Idaho, yeah. like hours in the truck, going, hiking, experiencing things like seeing hot springs. Yeah. Like, dude, it, it was fucking awesome okay a question and I, I hate to i hate to keep going back to it for those yeah, no. who don't for those people who don't like hunting i'm i'm sorry but i'm kind of fascinated by it so when you start quartering it is it stink is it reek is it like is there uh, any, any any rituals that you guys go through when you start carving it up that was like... my first time that was my first time doing that do, uh, quartering out a bear skinning and quartering it and because it was a trophy um because it was such a, I mean, it was a beautiful animal. It was such, it's, it's a massive one. Yeah. So he's like, dude, we want to make sure we don't fuck up the the hide. Like, yeah, yeah, sure yeah. Skin it out properly. So he showed me how to. Bear has a very specific smell. Um, oh, yeah. It's it's a rough smell, dude. Really? Bear is not a, a flavor that everybody likes. It's a very greasy animal, yeah. um, very fatty. Uh, and I mean, I liked it because it was super gamey. And huh. I'm into it. I'm I'm. I like this stuff. Uh, so like I was into it. We made bear sausage. When I think of, when I think bear. of, when I think of gamey, I think of smelly box. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you just, I mean, like it's it's where it's the fuck have you been fucking smelling? That? <laughs> right. That's good for it. Oh my god, she smells like dead beer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just that really potent, like that really potent fucking pungent. Yeah, yeah. Dead bear in the room. It didn't, oh. it didn't smell like a rough one. Okay, okay. No, but, uh, <laughs> it was bare. Okay. When did but, did you eat it when you got back to the camp? Oh yeah, we we went and threw it on the we threw it on the skillet because that's what I want to do. I wanted to, I watch so many uh, yeah. meat eater shows like just yeah. Steve Ranella. I love love that like, show. Yeah, I want to I want to experience. I just want I'm I'm so in. I want to experience different things in life, and I'm right. like I love right. hunting. I love the concept. I want to connect with the earth. I want to see what it's like to take the life of an animal right like this size right. And um and that's what really put me on this journey of like this was really awesome. I'm with two other men that are very knowledgeable of the wilderness and the mountains yeah. and have the same mentality I do. Family, God, faith, like they're into it. They they appreciate what they're doing. They're not someone, they're not people out there that are hunting for a massive trophy and they're not eating it to feed their families. They're not out there just doing it to do it. They yeah. love it. They embrace it. Um, like their freezers are full. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah. Like hundreds well, this of, is, hundreds of pounds. Well, this is the thing Branch Warren has always said to me. You know, people get on him about hunting, but what he told me was when they go kill, when they go on those boar hunts, yeah, they'll go take those boars, they'll carve them up, and they'll take all the meat to Metroflex, right? And they'll feed the homeless. They'll right. Just yeah. Pass. They'll just pass out meat to like yeah. people who need it. So yeah. it's like, how much better of a situation could you be in? For sure. So it, it doesn't hurt anybody really if you think about it. Just. I think people don't really understand. So what's it's it, they don't understand it. And I, and then whenever we went on the elk hunt, that was a completely different way, more intense. Uh, like you, I was in very good shape. I trained for it. I was prepared for it. It was a terrifying hunt. Um, but even like, like that hunt, like whenever you kill an elk, like elk are fucking massive. Yeah. Yeah. Like they are really big animals. Paul, do you want to ask him about mule deer? Have mule deer. you ever seen one? This next year, right, next, next this year, I'm going mule deer hunting. I won't. Paul, really? Paul, Paul's dying to hunt mule deer. Mule deer. No, I'm not dying. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just fascinated by the animal. But uh... they are. They are. Listen, when you watch an elk move, how big they are and how they're able to scale a mountain will blow your mind. Yeah, I'm they sure. They are insane animals. Like I mean, like dude, we hiked. I hiked the one day we hiked probably 15 miles. Oh, there's mule deer. Look at that thing. Yeah, like a big mule deer. See, this is what you're fascinated by? <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. It looks like I a just... fuck... it looks like any other fucking Ooh, elk. That boy jacked the... the horns on that. Yeah, it's jacked. Thick neck. Here, let's see. Have you ever seen, seen a moose? A, I've seen a moose in real life. They're Have fucking... you? Where? Let's... Uh, oh. When I was when we were in a canoe trip up in Tomogamy, up north in Ontario, we were on, like on the canoe trip, and it was on the fucking shoreline, just fucking staring at us, like fucking antlers like get how close were you mike get the fuck out of there we were probably like it was like standing at the shoreline we were probably like 30 feet out like in the middle of the lake okay and i was like let's just fucking get going here because yeah. Uh... <laughs> hey, yeah i know yeah. i know i'm not a big guy but this is uh this is the hind quarter of the elk i killed holy shit can you zoom <laughs> and it was not it was not a big elk it was a it was like a three-year-old elk okay. so you hold it by its legs, right? Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, it's back his, that's his dick. That's I'm, dick. I'm, a, I'm a city guy. I'm a city man. I'm like, I, this stuff's all foreign to me. It's actually his dong right there. <laughs> so, so, Seth, did you train at all for the bear hunt or no? A little bit. I did, but I thought I was in really good shape. Yeah. But I was not. And then he explained it to me whenever I drew the tag for the elk. I drew the tag and he's like, hey, dude. He's like, I'm really excited for you. This is going to be great. He's like, but you need to be in shape. Yeah. Like, I'm, you need to be in real fucking shape. And I'm like, like, I can't. And he's like, no, dude. He's like, like you weren't in shape. Jump. Yeah. He's like, no. I'm like, I do cardio. And he's like, no, Seth. He's like, we're going to be scaling fucking mountains 9,000 yeah, yeah. feet yeah, up. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I trained, I started training really, really hard for it. Yeah. And, uh, whenever I got out there, I was in really good shape, but it was fucking insane terrain. Like yeah. we're going, you're going up rock faces. You're going across rock faces. You're carrying a 20 pound sack already. Uh, we carried out whenever we took out that elk, 
Um, it was uh, just under five miles uh, from where we were. So we hiked out. I probably had like 150, 160 on my back. And uh, Zach had the same. And then Ryan took a different route to get the side by side to us. Yeah. Yeah. From where yeah. we were going. Yeah. Uh, cause we couldn't go, we couldn't go back the same way that we came in because it was too dangerous. Mm -hmm. So then we had to find a different route out and, uh, it was about five miles <clears throat> and Fuck, man. it was, it no, was no Google maps. Eh? So, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the crazy thing Finance. about it, <laughs> the crazy thing about it is this all started by you messaging, like somebody you kind of chat to online. I would have, I would have never done that. I see people like, I see people do this kind of stuff all the time. But I, you know, you talk to a little bit here and there on Instagram, but I would never be like, Hey, take me with you. Nope. Like I would never like where, so me and Jay are with him uh third night in the tent in Idaho for the bear hunt. And he goes, he goes, Hey dude, I got to ask you something. I'm like, yeah, dude, what's up? He's like, why are you here? I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean, dude? I'm here to like, I want to go hunting with you and experience. He's like, yeah, how do you know? I'm not like some psychopath. Yeah. Oh, like, you know, like you're in the middle of Idaho. He's like, like I'm fucking kill you right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and you're joking, done. right? And I'm like, hey, dude, like, we're cool. And he's like, I'm just <laughs> fucking with you, but I'm actually curious. Yeah. I'm like, dude. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's that's... the one I open after that. It's he's dude, he is a hoot. The, this guy deserves his own. He needs a TV show. He yeah, is a riot. You didn't have any qualms about just like going out to hang out with some dude you kind of really didn't know you're like you know what fuck it i'm gonna go hunting with this guy no i mean it's the hunting community is uh it's it's a different community but he seemed like a good guy yeah. <laughs> his, his instagram seemed his honest. profile picture is like <laughs> he's like got a gun in his profile picture like <laughs> oh yeah he is in holding a deer head fucking you know, yeah. <laughs> come to idaho <laughs> But it's uh, I I have met uh, him and Ryan. They're they're both just fucking such great dudes, and they love making sure people have the experience. Like whenever I went out there, they were like, "Hey, dude, like we know you're like you're you're famous in your world." He's like, "I got to tell you this." He's like, "The mountain doesn't give a fuck who you think you are." Yeah. He's I like, "This that, is yeah. the wilderness." He's like, "The climate and where we are going can can kill you alone." Right, right. He's like, so you got to be ready and you got to be prepared for this. It's not a fucking joke whenever you go hunting in the mountains. Right. And sure enough, dude, I mean, there were, it was 60 during the day and 25 degrees at night. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, dude, yeah. you come in here in the winter time. I was like, you get fucked up. He's like, Seth, he's like two feet of snow will dump in a night. Yeah. He's like, we'll yeah. wake up. And he's like, you'll be under snow. You'll, your top of your tent will be out. I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, and I'm, I'm at the point where the, the experience and the adventure, like I'm, yeah. I told them as we get, we're going to get, we get together every year now. It's been mm -hmm. two years. So this year we're going to Alaska to go uh, caribou hunting. Okay. Um, and then uh, I drew a mule deer tag too. So I might head out there and do uh rifle mule deer just for the meat. Take a picture for Paul and send it to him. Please, oh, dude, please, Paul, Seth. you're going to get steaks, dude. I'll, 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 I'll yeah, take a particular taste, Detroit. Seth. I appreciate that. But... <laughs> <laughs> Pictures are great, though. The, uh, but no, it's cool. It's uh, I think what, what I'll take away, and then I'll stop from here. The takeaway that I got from these experiences is I do believe that everybody uh, should go hunting. Not to kill an animal, but just be there for the experience. Yeah. You will see that. how intense it is. You'll 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 be able to feel uh, the, the how close you are with an animal that that is dead. You yeah. killed it. Somebody yeah. killed it, yeah. and you're going to assist in skinning it and quartering it out and taking it home and eating it. Yeah, uh, I grew so I grew way more of appreciation for it than I did before, and I just think that people should be present for them. It's it's a very intense, emotional. Uh, and you do have like a spiritual sense when you're there. You're like, yeah, I'm skinning a, a live animal. Like this is pretty fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. cutting I mean, its arms and legs off. I'd like to. Do it. I'd like to. It's something I've always wanted to do. I just, I don't know if it's something I'll ever get. Around. I don't know. If yeah, we got to eat it. If that makes it like it's only certain things I'll eat. So we have to decide what kind of animal we're gonna hunt. <laughs> yeah, you got to eat it. Turkeys I like turkey. Paul's like, hey, Paul's like, can we hunt pigs? Is there a donut, <laughs> there a donut deer? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Western PA's turkey hunting, brother. Like, really? It's big. It's How do you kill turkey? Yeah. How? How do you kill turkey? Yeah. Like a gun. 
shoot it shoot like in the head. Fucker. Some people, yeah, some people do archery too. Like they'll just shoot. They, they there's big broadheads that you'll use for turkey uh, archery hunting, oh, wait, and they'll wait. fucking wait, shoot wait, their wait. <laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Ask him the question you asked him before he said he saw it. You say said you kill turkey. Then what'd you say? How do you kill it? And then you said what'd you say? Shoot him in the head. Yeah. Well, I'm just picturing a turkey with that long neck. It must be like yeah. a hard target to hit. Uh, that's what we <laughs> yeah. Well, you fucking go to gun the gun range. Are you going to shoot the head or the body? I'm not naturally that good of a shot. I got to work on my. I know shot. that, but they, <laughs> but they teach you how to. Our shoot. borders are secured. Do they? Yeah, but borders are. These secured. are these these are moving targets, Fuad. These are I, stationary targets. I know, but do they teach you to shoot small or shoot big? Center of mass. Right. So why would you shoot the fucking head? It's this big. <laughs> but you're gonna eat the meat. You don't. You're not gonna shoot it in the body. Well, you still eat the meat when you shoot a bear, but you still shoot the bear in the right spot, and then you eat the meat. You're just gonna not not eat the bullet. Yeah. Don't eat the bullet. So you thought that they had to shoot it like in the neck so that they could still eat the breast the meat? They, they will, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it depends on how good of a shot you are and what you're capable of. I don't like, think a lot of people are going to shoot in the head, though. Come on. A turkey, probably not. Oh, Fuad, you will get, you, you, the hunting industry, like, you know how good we are at lifting weights? Yeah. And like, people look at us and be like, dude, how the fuck did you do that? Yeah, but you're telling you're me like, these guys are shooting deer from Yeah, 50 they'll years. peg a fucking head off from like 20 yards away. I'm yeah. not. I'm not saying they can't do it, but is that where they aim? Because I've never heard that before. And I, think. <laughs> I would they think because you don't want to spoil the meat, right? Well, it depends on what you're shooting it with. If you're if you're if you're archery hunting with uh, with a turkey, like it's going to be if you you dude, like I said, dude, there's people you're shooting a broadhead that like whenever it's it, it'll open up yeah. and it's just a giant blade spinning that's this big and it's okay. super light. So they're trying to shoot it in its neck so it cuts off so it looks cool and it's fun. And you didn't hit, you don't have any pellets in the in the breast meat. Okay. It looks and cool then, and like, it's fun. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, you train for it. So with um so and yes, whenever you're hunting anything, you want I mean, you want the most perfect shot to kill the animal as quickly as possible. Okay. And there are people that I I I'm I'm okay. Like I'd consider myself above average as a shot. Um, these people that I go hunting with are like absolutely terrifyingly ridiculous with weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I yeah. mean, unbelievable. Well, it's and like it, you know what it's like. I equate it to like when we going into jujitsu. You think, I mean, all guys think they're tough, right? Mm -hmm. And all guys probably think they can handle a gun, and all guys think they can race a car, and all. And on two separate occasions. I've been shown that just because you're a guy doesn't mean you can do any of those fucking things. Nope. So I sat in a race car with a professional race car driver and I was like, and I think I can drive. And I was like, holy fuck. I didn't know a car could do this. Like it's unbelievable what this guy, how fast he was going around corners, like how hard he was braking, like just things that I thought would destroy a vehicle. <clears throat> so then second, second learning lesson, we go to jujitsu. Travis sure. weigh Travis weighs 150 pounds, and he's six feet tall, five eleven maybe. Yeah, five eleven, 150 pounds. He's a beanpole. You're like, oh fuck, this guy can't do anything to me. I say one time, he's training us. I say one time on the podcast, you know, I just love to know what it feels like to go full speed with these guys, just once, because I outweigh the guy by 150 pounds or whatever. So the next day I come into class, he happens to watch the podcast. He goes, <laughs> he goes, you know what? Let's see what it's like. He goes, <laughs> I won't go 100%. I go, just take it easy on me, man. I was just talking. I didn't really mean it. Talking to sound <laughs> cool, just, make a, just make a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> he proceeded to tap me out about 46 times in a fucking yeah, like, five minute. Yeah, it was just it was embarrassing. It's embarrassing. These guys, a real fighter. That's why I like when people like Bradley Martin are like, oh, I could fight you and I'm 260. And I'm like, this guy's going to kill you. This guy kills people for a living. Like, this is yes. what he does. Yes. And so I, I'm just kind of relating. Like, I know what you mean about the hunt. It's, it's their, it's their life. It's their. Yeah. 100%. It's the, yeah. it's, it's so, and that's why I, I mean, I am very surf surface level, scratch a surface. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm just getting into it and I, ha I absolutely love it. Um, But whenever you get around those, you just grow. I, I am, I'm like, I'm like a little kid out there. I'm like, tell me more. 
Yeah, you can yeah, tell, yeah. They can tell yeah. me anything. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like soaking everything in yeah. just because it's an experience. And I think everybody should go do them like you do in jujitsu or yeah. people going and shooting guns or anything. It's like, yeah, experience it. See what it's yeah. like. That's yeah. the only way you're going to find out whether you like something or not. Well, you know, the other thing, Seth, it's not just about finding something you like. It's nice to be humbled every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. Because especially when you're a bodybuilder for X amount of years and like, you know, maybe if you got to our level or if you maybe you're a great coach or maybe you're great in your city or whatever. And you develop like this, or maybe it's another business. Maybe you have some other business and you're like a great businessman. You have tons of money and you develop this like ego. Yeah, for sure. And then you go do something somebody else does really well and you fucking suck at it, whether it be hunting or race car driving or fighting. And you're like, holy shit, I'm just a, I'm just a speck on the- I'm nobody the, right now. Yeah. And it, this is pretty cool. It almost like brings you back down to earth and gives you a level of excitement that you can yeah. like, now you can work towards something. So- Yeah, no, I agree. Let me um, let me ask you this: Is this a matter of you being almost forty, or is this a matter of you being retired and just having the means to experience life in a new way? Um, a little bit of both. I yeah. think as we all get older, like we're all getting older, and uh, for me personally, like I don't know, dude, I do not want to like say what it could have, should have. Mm. I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. And I, at this point, like having the means to do these things, like it didn't, it, the thing is, this didn't cost me anything. Like we're doing public land hunts. Yeah. Like I'm going out with this guy and we're just friends out hunting. He's not charging me. He's there's no, there's nothing like that exchange other than a friendship and helping experience something on public land. Yeah. yeah like that's yeah. crazy. So um, I think that I just want to make sure I experience it. And I don't have like many traditions. Mm. I don't have too many in my life yeah. and it kind of bothers me because I think that's something in society that's going downhill. Like when not you, like when it, you say it, traditions, do you mean like just something that you do every year? doesn't matter what it is, but just something that you focus on family traditions, heirlooms, yeah. things like that. Like I don't, I don't have many of them. Like I come from an Italian family, but I don't have a homemade Dago red wine recipe. I I don't have yeah dude I don't oh, have like I don't have one either. I was like <laughs> I don't have one well, because I'm Italian too Seth so I'm just thinking to myself I, I don't drifted have one either, back actually. on that one like I know <laughs> he was like he's like do I have one of those no. <laughs> yeah. but it's so but my my great grand my grandfather uh and and his brothers made wine but whenever they all passed like everybody stopped getting together for it and I'm like fuck dude we don't have that oh yeah so, and I get out of shape about it yeah. but then my I'm like make wine. Yeah, I'm like maybe maybe I should find a way to start creating some traditions in my life with people that I'm, even if like I don't know those guys too well, but I do now. We get together once a year together, and all of us have sons, and they're all relatively the same age, within five years of one another. And as we get older, like yeah. I want to bring our sons together once yeah. a year so that they can do this, and we stop we stop hunting. We're there with them. We're all hunting together, but they're the ones doing the killing. Yeah. And they're experiencing lives with uh, experiencing life with their fathers. So I don't have a whole lot of those things in my life. And I'm like, well, if I don't have them, I can't cry about them. Why don't I start creating them? Why don't I be the the father and the grandfather that makes these things happen yeah. and, and make sure that they understand the importance? Like I want to have certain things that I pass on to my son or my grandson. And they have like, I'm, I, trying, to I, think, I, I'm trying to think if I have any traditions <clears throat> in my life. I kind of more have just things I want to do. I don't know if I have a yearly like tradition, but then I don't have kids either. So I don't know if yeah. that's like a thing, but I don't know if I have a yearly tradition that I want to like, there's a lot of stuff I want to do every year, whether it be like motorcycle riding or whatever. I'm like, yeah. you know, going on a bike trip or something like that. But like, I can't think of a, of a, of like a specific tradition that I have every year. Really. Well, it could be something like getting together with your family for certain yeah. holidays, whatever, you know? It could be literally. Yeah. It could be fucking anything. But like you said about the motorcycle, we'll it off. Well, that's not really what it, that's not really what he means, though. Mean, that, like that is a tradition, but like getting together for Christmas is a. It's kind of like a taken for granted. Everybody kind of gets together for Christmas. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a specific thing that you created that nobody else is doing. Yeah, like um, everybody like, gets together for Christmas, like an annual vacation or something like something, that. Something, something that another. you create, something that was specific to your family or you and your friends. Yeah, like, yeah let's yeah. say, like, let's say every year we went to the cottage on July thirtieth for a week or whatever it was. That would be yeah. our our group of friends. Thing. Yeah, well, a, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's, like, so that's coming with guns. That's coming. <laughs> 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 I bring the stakes. 
but yeah like that's i think he means outside of like what everybody else is doing yeah okay sure, yeah like a lot of like i just find today in today's society like we all uh, the world went and got itself into a big damn hurry and now like even me dude i'm i'm always working and i could i need to do a better job of it of of like taking more time for things but whenever i am wherever i'm at at that given moment i'm in it 100 yeah. percent. and like i think that things got lost like you know in society are the generation there's a generation that just focused on work yeah. and not so much on on family and traditions and i don't know if that's totally true though seth if you think back like you're you're not I'm, you're not wrong but if you think back to our parents yeah like it was all about work my mom was home my mom was home my dad went to work but my dad worked 12 hour days yep and my I mom now was, though and my mom was constantly working whether it was just in the house whether yeah. it, whether it was sewing our clothes or cooking dinner or just whatever the fuck she was doing she was working for the home the people are more hustling now i and for what i agree but with the thing what i like i'm not trying to knock my dad but i don't got many traditions with my old man you know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. have those because he was always working. Right, right. And that's right. where I'm like, fuck. Like I need to make sure that I kind of want to restart that. Yeah. Because that generation, like that 15 year generation of that 65 year old to 50 year old, yeah. motherfucker, those are a dying breed, and they are hard working, ignorant bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They love their work. It's and 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 that's that's where I'm like, fuck. I was like. I don't have anything. And it's like, I'm like, how can I do something? Just one thing that my son will remember. And then one thing, like if I have grandchildren, like what can I do with them to make sure they knew they knew grandpa did this? Like, mm. cause dude, do, do you know who your great grandfather is? No, never met him. I don't know either, man. Never, my, never met my grandfather either. I don't know nothing about him. And I'm like, so at one point, at some point in your, in your lineage or who you are, you're going to be fucking forgotten about. Yeah, but why is that a problem? What's that? Why is that a problem? Well, it's not a problem, but it's kind of that thing where I'm like, what what am I going to leave behind whenever I go from here? Like look at us in our in the industry of bodybuilding. Yeah, like but with what we're what you're with what we're doing. Go ahead. No. What you're what you're leaving is not tangible. What you're leaving is well, I don't know if tangible is the right word. What you're leaving is not a thing. You're leaving three children behind that are going to carry your name yes for me for me that's like that's what i'm saying so i want to make right. sure that whenever i leave i leave behind the children and they know that there is some something that they hold on to i want to make sure that that oh they i see what you're saying so like okay i got you wait a minute so you're saying like let's say every july 5th i took my son if i had one to the fucking race car track and we raced a car together yes then he brought his grandkid and the three of us did it together yes. and then i died but they kept all doing it together so a hundred years from now, they'd be like, grandpappy fucking Fuad started this shit and now we're still doing it. Yep. Okay. I Here's a picture. Here's a picture of me and grandpap whenever we first started doing this. I got you. I got picture you. Of these sense. three generations doing this. Yeah, it makes so sense. It's, it's those little things that I'm like, I don't know. Like I find that fascinating. It is. Like, I, it is I'm cool. Like, I'm cool. And it's, you know, even within the sport of bodybuilding, like whenever we look back to fucking uh like the early days of arnold and then we're like who was in that generation what did they do to help mold this yeah, yeah. like yes up wilcox and his posing and we're all like we're still in it we know it mm -hmm. so i think that like from a family standpoint like i want to have those things in my life so for paul's family he'd be like when your daughters are old enough you'll eat shrooms with them and then, <laughs> they'll, and then they'll eat shrooms with their kids and they'll eat no. shrooms with their kids and then they'll be like i'm, I'm responsible dad grandpappy I, uh no, my my girls don't know that side of me. I'm just. Joking. Um, but uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll never watch us. Hopefully, in their lifetimes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but no, I know you're talking about those. Seth, but no, I I try to do that stuff with my with that kind of things with my daughter. I try to build memories for them so that when they look back on their childhood, they remember these special things that we did together, not just the day to day stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I totally get what you're trying to say now. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We've we've gotten away from. I ran with that one. My bad. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. I wanted to know. I was curious, but we do have to talk about some bodybuilding because it is a bodybuilding show, kind of. It um, is. Um, I had to change. I'm gonna make my changes to my picks, dude. Me too. Okay, let me let me share my screen. Oh, that's our new drop. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't yeah, look at to, that. 
Didn't mean to show that. Okay, but, but <laughs> so the size thermal can't stuff. seem to get this off the screen. I can't. I don't know why it's stuck here. No. <laughs> Forty nine nine nine. It's a good price. <laughs> thermal. What did you say, Seth? The oversized thermals. Yeah, man. They're sick. Okay, no, I actually did this on purpose. So then we got. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to show you guys shit. So uh, those of you who don't know, Mike's got Wicked dot com. I'm sure you know by now, but Wicked dot com. You're dropping some new stuff in like a week. Yeah. Uh, cool. Do you have any? Do you have any? Is there any like uh, teasers or anything or no? Yeah, on my Instagram, there's some reels up and stuff like that. You can see it on there. Okay, so go there's nothing to on the website now. These are these are some of the current stuff. Go to Mike's website, wicked.com, if you're listening on audio. Wicked with a Y. Check out all yeah. his stuff. Drake wears his stuff, so that's like his main uh, influencer. So do I. You, mm. have, you have Drake signed, uh, Mike? <laughs> yeah, he's Good actually pickup. signed, yeah. Good pickup. <laughs> <laughs> And then we got Seth stuff. You Seth, don't want to know what we pay him. It's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> Seth, we just Seth, you just dropped a new all-in-one pre-workout. Yes, I appreciate it. Yeah, we finally dropped it. It's it's uh we're very excited about it. We just dropped it at 8 p.m. tonight. So oh awesome. tonight. Oh, so tomorrow by tomorrow, this will be like you'll know how you fucking how the launch went. Yep, we'll know how we went. This I gotta Look. show that. I gotta show this. Look, this is actually pretty fucking hilarious. Uh Seth just dropped this new protein. Never ending chocolate. It's a limited protein. I gotta show. Oh fuck! I pressed the wrong one. Who the hell is that guy? Seth Rogan. Rogan. Oh, Seth Rogan. <laughs> wrong, wrong Seth. You Never guys ending got, chocolate sounds delicious. You gotta. T- you guys gotta see that. Well, don't tell that to fucking Paul and Ian because they're. Can you make a, make a some type I'm of a van- crazy. See, I'm a vanilla guy. Yeah. I am a vanilla guy, but dude, this chocolate. Are you serious? Dude, vanilla is just okay. like fucking. It's just, it's just yeah, fucking milk. So like, white. You guys so are white. Is white. I'll give you that. So white. <laughs> Sociopaths. <laughs> it is very white. This guy's favorite thing at McDonald's is a fucking a vanilla, vanilla milk. Have I'm like, one. I'll I'm tell like, you. I'm, I'm telling you right now. If you have one, you'll thank it's me. It's just ice and fucking milk. No, it isn't. There's there's a distinct flavor to God it. God damn it! No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying that about it. It's just sweet enough. <laughs> That's the line right there. It's just sweet enough. Okay, this Seth just dropped. Seth, I gotta, I gotta applaud you for this kind of shit. I could never do this kind of shit. Dude, we were dying. Uh, one sec. Oh, where'd the sound go? Fuck. Go for a delicious chocolate. Let me start over. Working at the factory all day sure makes me feel like I could go for a delicious chocolatey protein shake. <laughs> Never ending chocolate. Never ending. Like a trip to Target with your wife. Never ending. <laughs> Never ending fans addiction. Never ending like your insatiable lust to hit PRs and get jam jacked and juicy. Never ending like your contemplation to take steroids and actually get huge. Farm fed never ending chocolate, the flavor that lasts infinitely longer than your sex game. (laughs) Farm fed never ending chocolate. We have six different flavors of chocolate inside one protein. Milk chocolate, little bit of white chocolate, dark chocolate. Now why would you go and do something like that? I love these Pumpaloompas, but they have two brain cells fighting for third place. A little bit of chocolate <laughs> mousse, some chocolate fudge, some mocha chocolate. This is a chocolate, where did you even find that? I'm so glad I don't pay these guys. I can taste all six chocolates. Fuck is this chocolate. good. This is, this is fucking, this is great by the way. So this chocolate flavor is delightful. This guy. The chocolate fudge. <laughs> Outstanding. You can taste the notes of mocha on the end. Shut up, pussy. Yeah, pussy. There's actually a little bit of chocolate in here. Wow. Nice. Taste that dark chocolate. That's it. I'm never going back. What'd you say? <laughs> you heard me. That's fucking... <laughs> That's awesome. <sighs> Papa Lupas, my shake. Did you put anything in this? <laughs> the last time these little fuckers made me a shake, I went blind for a week. <laughs> this, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him laughing at you. <laughs> Fucking 
farm-fed never-ending chocolate available now that's fucking awesome <laughs> that was awesome thank that's you so good. thank you i appreciate you putting okay. that on there <laughs> question yeah i know and people are gonna think you like made me do it um yeah, no, it's, <laughs> those listen those are the most fun things that we Why? do are the farm fed videos so who, who writes that shit is that you and the team or is there one guy that like brainstorms no, the we, shit so we all get together for any time we release a new farm fed flavor uh, we just get together and sit down because we did a blooper reel and yeah. the blooper reel became a massive hit like yeah. years and years ago so yeah. we were like hey we should do this for all the farm fed like this cheesy like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All that fun <laughs> stuff. And it just became so for every single one we come out uh for all of them, we get together and come up with ideas and spitball it and just have fun. That's pretty fucking awesome, man. Yeah, um, thank you. It's, it's awesome. I, I gotta re say a quick thank you to Brandon. Brandon runs the bodybuilding of bollocks page on Instagram. He sent me this fucking hoodie. It's his his clothing company. It says Forever Bulking Crew. Mm. And then it says it in Asian too. I think that's what it says in Asian. I don't know. <laughs> we'll but, ben. We call but, ben. But, but underneath that, it says forever bulking crew. And then on the back, there's some shit. But I have even a bigger surprise. One second. I like how Asian became a language right there. <laughs> <laughs> we just assume that Ben speaks all it's of it. written in Asian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. What the fuck is that? What's that say? Bro chat. It's amazing. Oh, cool, man. Look at that! Fucking... I love that. You, gotta get, you gotta get him to make the fucking Thanos one. Did he make that or someone else make that? The Thanos the one, Mar the Marvel one, where no, I'm Thanos. And... Somebody else oh, made that. Fuck. Um, but yeah, so he made the bro chat tea with me, Ian, uh, Paul, and Mike on it, and then awesome. This, this is the back of his hoodie. You guys got to check out his clothing like line. That. So it's got like a it's martial good. arts kind of theme to it. Yeah, he's got some nice stuff. So anyway, thank you, Brandon. I appreciate the gift, and this is fucking amazing. Oh, so, pretty cool. sick. Okay, on to more important things. Now we have to talk about bodybuilding. What are we going to do about this? What do you guys think? <clears throat> Looks amazing. Is that the winner? Can I ask, is, is everybody else see a discrepancy in this leg? Yeah, it's slight, but you can see it. It's not bad. No, it's not bad. It's not like he's going to like lose because of it. I'm just no, saying. No, I think I, I, I agree. It's there. I think we all have, you know, those little those little inconsistencies or. Uh, this one this one seems more than just like a little different, though. Like, I'm, I'm wondering if it's like. I mean, now that you're pointing at it, yeah, there is. There's a difference. And I think it's it's one of those things that he's like hits the straight on shots. Yeah. He could hide it a little bit better. Maybe. Yeah, he could. Yeah, he could no? for sure. Yeah, but I, I I agree. They're still massive and terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> conditioning is, conditioning is great this far out. Like his fucking the the hardness the, and the thinness of yeah. the skin. Dude from the front has always nuts though, man. He's yeah, always. But, nuts you know what's front. crazy is I actually yeah the back. I can't here. Let's show the back before we leave here. Yeah. My I actually think he's better from the back than he is from the front. And I think I saw somebody put up a comparison with Samson and Hottie. And I actually think I kind of have hot Samson from the front and Hottie from the back. Yeah, me too. And it's then just I think from the side where it'd be decided probably. The side is like kind of where I think it's going to, you know, and the yeah. ab and the ab and thigh and the most muscular. Yeah. Which I don't know. It's tough. Like it's two just completely different body types too, you know, which makes yeah, it, it even tougher. So it's a full complete back. It's so nice. Yeah, that is, is one thick back. And yeah. You can't feel any more muscle on there. His condition is no. pretty wild too, man. For four weeks out, or I think we're less than four now. Right now, it's looking like his all-time best. I was just gonna say that he looks better here. He, he yeah, he's hungry. Mm. Well, he's fucking angry. There's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing better than a fucking he person who's angry. To... That's mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go to Samson's last update. Was actually really impressive as well. Mm -hmm. His last update was fucking wild. I think this is it. Yeah, four weeks out. Skin looks a little thinner. Mm -hmm. The feathering in the quad, you can see the skin looks a little bit thinner on on his legs. Oh, buddy, yeah, Jeez. like like that from the front is Bro. fucking. Wild. You can't, I don't know if you can he beat that. He's, he's never looked like this before. Yeah, no. No, the thin the skin is getting really thin now. Like he looks yeah. he looks better here than he did it than he did at the Olympia. 
people yeah. people forget that a lot of Samson's muscle is new. I mean, he's put on a lot of size in three years, so like it's got to mature a bit. And like, I don't know if that's bro sciency, but like, new muscle is never as hard as mature muscle, for sure. But like from the front, I forget <laughs> what I forget what channel it was. Like that's I've never seen this on Samson. Yeah. Never. I've I've seen these lines a little bit, but I've never seen the depth of this uh cut right here. And especially this far like out to, still. I, I like to call this the soap dish, but I've never seen <laughs> I've never seen that on him. This this dude see, this is what I was talking about last time about him just that next level. Yeah. This dude's progressing at a rate that's out of fucking control. I know, yeah, right? Right. For probably seen, like look like insane. look at like look at this. Like that's that's new. Hottie's harder in some spots, but some of the lines are deeper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Hottie's definitely got better glutes. There's no doubt. But his yeah. the lines and the lines in Samson's hamstrings are actually deeper. But then that's where I think Hottie's got him is like the back shots. Yep. But they're getting better. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. See, that's what I was saying, dude. That this motherfucker is gonna look at that. Look at this terrifying. hamstring. Yeah. Look how look at, big he is. Look at this Jeez. fucking the hardness of his hamstring. Yeah. It's like it's just nasty shit. It's gonna be a uh, great battle. I want to go. I love how nice both of those guys are too. I think it's this guy that posted Fernando might have been posted a side by side. This was at the Olympia, but I think there's a, a side by side of their most recent update. Or maybe not. I don't know where I saw that shit. Hmm. Uh wait, there it is. Yes. So from the back, this is what I was saying. From the back, it's I think it's hottie. Because his back is just too big and too complete. Yeah. Oh, in right? this shot I, for sure. I mean, if you look at this, Samson's doesn't have the glutes, but I actually like his legs better. Huh? I personally agree. I don't know. It's tough. I mean it's, yeah. This quad is I'm not I'm I mean, uh, Hottie's much, much older as well. You know what I mean? So it's like you can see how hard Hottie is. Yeah. But Samson just has that fresh, statuesque look to him. And his hamstrings are getting harder. And, like, as he matures over the next couple of years, it's going to get way better. But given in this shot, I say Hottie wins it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. See Samson agree. where he's coming. I agree. I agree. You know, there's something to be said, too, and this is – probably goes against bodybuilding uh critique or criteria but samson has small glutes but it actually makes his legs look bigger and better yeah it makes whereas, it shape better whereas hottie's got definitely got thicker glutes but it almost takes away from his leg size a little bit in comparison yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh let's see what the lat spread looks like if we're gonna go or is that it no we got a lat spread here See and pull it out all the way. Stop. This is the. I think the light is washing this out. But yeah, in this photo, I mean, there's a lot more muscle here. But this is really pretty. Yeah, I still think there's more tissue on Hottie's back. It's Hottie's, you know, and the lats yeah. especially. But yeah. uh, but Samson's closing that gap. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think I have to give the back shots to to Hottie just because the the thickness of his back. But then if you look from the front. From the front, I got Samson. Look at that. Just, I mean, I that's know. not. I don't know how you look, can beat that. Look, there's nothing wrong with Hottie. It's it's nice. It's cr the crisp. There's a ton of muscle. But if you look at Samson's physique, it's like fuck, man. That's what everybody wants. Yep, Samson that's... didn't look like that at the Olympia. No, man. Like that's why I said from the front. And look, it's actually more balanced. Like if you look at the mm -hmm. thickness of Samson of Hottie's waist, and then in relation to his quads, and then look at this waist into relation to the quads, it's like. The X frame is almost much greater. It is. He's um, got a better X frame for sure. Oh, it is Samson. Thirty six. But uh, I don't know, Mike. What do you think? You're kind of quiet. I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Like, like if I had to choose, like I would. I'm a bigger fan of Samson's physique. Like, right. I I think that that's bodybuilding, right? But. But if you're talking about bodybuilding criteria, do you see Samson winning from the front or the back? I just, it's like I talked about last week. I just think that, I think that right now there's going to, there's like a changing of the garden. There's like a shifting of, of what bodybuilding is. 
Yeah, I agree. So I think I think that there's going to be I'm I want to change picks, but I'm not changing my picks. I'm keeping Samson at first because I I think that there's literally like I think this is the time when things are swaying. Yeah, I think it's I think they're making a point of that being the case with Hadi placing where he placed at the Olympia and having it be that close and promoting a guy like Derek to be ahead of him, who's a lot prettier to look at, maybe not as hard, maybe not as whatever in certain areas, but we all know that Samson is like, like the most statuesque guy on there. Right. So, and it's also, let's go his, for these. It's also his show to his show to lose in the sense that he won last year. So. Oh, there isn't. Everyone, there was, sorry. Go everyone's ahead. talking about, everyone's talking about Hadi being, on a war path to come back and do whatever, but it's like you also have to understand like Samson's the reigning champ, right? So yeah, and he's do, gonna look better than he did last year. So but do people see it that way since Hadi beat Samson at the Olympia? I don't know. I think I think it's hard to say. Look at this. Look at this. This is the Olympia. This is now. Mm, it's different. Very shoulder looks rounder, arm looks a little bigger. Legs more are detail. definitely this definitely dude more detailed. Is thirty six years old progressing like this? That is I, out. Of I me. know, isn't mm-hmm. it nuts? And with <laughs> such little breaks, the guy's been competing so often. Well, and even if he's not competing, he's been traveling to do guest yeah. guest appearances and whatever. Like he's always doing something. Yep. Yeah, dude, he didn't see that. That's what I'm saying. This motherfucker didn't look like at the Olympia. You know what I think makes the story kind of interesting, Fuad, if I could just say one thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, these guys are going to face off at the Arnolds, and then they get to do it two weeks later again in the UK. Yeah. So depending on who brings their A game, you know, it could be. So I have, yeah, I probably shouldn't say that. I was going to say, like, I don't know if Hadi is in the U.S. yet. So I'm like. Yeah, it's hard to tell by his Instagram. For anybody post. following politics, there's been escalating tensions with Iran. Yes. So I don't think he's in Iran though. I think he's in Dubai, but he is Iranian. So I don't know. It, it, but he's also been here before. So I don't know how this whole fucking. But well, hopefully, doesn't that doesn't affect? Yeah, I mean, appearance. I hate to see that battle not happen. I know, I know. But if it doesn't, we have another awesome battle that's shaping up, which is James is trying to prove himself as a top contender, and his latest picks. Are kind of are kind of fucking impressive. Yeah. Like, Whenever is... I was on here a few weeks ago or whatever. Shut it was. up, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't look like that. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm still good. I'm not. Sh- I mean, I guess I'll be the f- fucking fourth bald one on the show here because <laughs> saved the head. So no, no, no. Look, I, I actually don't think. Okay, let's take a look at this, James. So before before I knew James. Before I met James, Ben told me that when he was coming up, he was known for his conditioning. But since he turned pro, like since I met him a couple of years ago, he's never really nailed that conditioning. Like, I mean, I think when he was with Patrick, he nailed it pretty good. Like he was really sharp and peaked well. But this looks like another level from that. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, man. Like this is, this is actually the best I've ever seen his back look. He looks like he's digging deep to where you yeah. can see him in his videos yeah. in the gym. Like he's there's just more detail here than I've ever seen. It's crazy. And Man, then if you a, that's see, a nasty back. Like sure. you look if you look at the front too, like this is great. Yeah, because that's one area where he's been lacking detail in the past is the abdominals at his remember his uh, at his O a couple of years ago. Well um, we're still, we're still sharp, gotta, we still gotta wait and see that because usually when he carbs up is when it starts to disappear a bit. Okay. So we'll have to see on stage. I don't know why this isn't popping up. I want it to it pop looks, up. It looks crisp in those pictures there. Yeah. I don't know why I can't fucking see this shit. I got to throw away my computer. <laughs> what happened? Got a Dell from it. Reliable. More reliable. <laughs> got a Dell better than an Apple. Yeah, okay, 98. Any of those all those bells and whistles. Okay. I just, I'm going to tell him again when I talk to him. I don't care if people think I'm crazy. I really think I know he wants to hit this pose this way because he loves Dorian Yates and he's hitting it properly. Like he's got a shoulder pulled around. There's detail in the chest, the arm and shoulder looks fucking crazy. But I feel like if you look at the side of the leg here and you look at the side of the leg here, he's losing too much hamstring here. In my opinion, hamstring hang. I don't know if you guys feel that way or you still, but I feel like there's definitely more hamstring drop here and you would have it here, which would complete this shot. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> that's part of what you're showing on that shot 
Does he does have this... a picture of him hitting it? Should I try something like that, or is he like? Does he have a problem hitting it the other way? He said he did. Preference. He said he did when he was um, heavier, but I think it's now it's a preference. <clears throat> Some classic posing. Here, let's I, see. I personal. The, the, go back. Yeah, I think he's having there for it. Uh, oh no. No, no. What the fuck is going on with my computer? <laughs> I got to throw this. I'm seriously going to throw this thing in the garbage. Nothing's working. <clears throat> I was going to. I was going to say personally. I don't think. Oh, we'll see. My head here. Ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that I don't know if it's going to happen as he diets down further. I don't think he has like the right glute hamstring tie in to hit that shot. You know what I mean? Like, see how yeah. kind of like it starts to shave out, like in that glute to hamstring tie in area. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's starting to pop a little bit, but I just don't know if as he gets any leaner, because that motherfucker's right there. Mm -hmm. like, I just feel. Far, I, I don't know how much he's more he's going to shave off. And if it doesn't give that illusion of that, like if it doesn't have the pop in the ham in the in the cheek, yeah, right there, like I don't know if you can hit that shot like that. I think he's losing some detail in the sh fuck this fucking thing, man. Um, I think he's losing some detail on that side tricep by not uh, hitting it traditionally. But I don't know. Who knows? We'll see the day of the show. Regardless of complaining about that, uh, James looks fucking phenomenal. He does. And I think he's going to be okay. Question is, do any of us think he can beat Samson? Because I think James' strategy, and I don't want to speak for him because he hasn't actually told me this. I'm just guessing. I think James' strategy is I can't beat Samson on shape, so I'm going to try and beat him on condition. Yeah. Do you guys think that James can beat Samson if he's uh, hard enough? I don't think so. I don't. And uh, you're saying Samson coming in at, at his best, like not being off at all. Uh, guys, I'm sorry, I'm having a problem with my computer tonight. I don't know why. Uh, this is the first time like this has ever fucking happened. We can yeah, still I, see it. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about um, Samson being off. I'm saying so. Just going on past appearances. Going on all past appearances, the consistency of Samson, the con the consistency of James. What we're seeing here, like. Do you think James can beat Samson or Hottie? In my opinion, yes, that's what I'm asking. No, I love James, but I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he can beat Samson or Hottie right now. Seth, no. Mm -mm. Love yeah. his physique. I, I'm. I'm. I think that he's top. He's top. Th top three. He's. I mean, he's in the third to fifth spot if he continues on this path. I think. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he breaks into uh, those two. I think I've. I've changed my mind again. I think I definitely have him in a, a, like a hard third. Yeah, strong third. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know if he can get ahead of Samson though. Samson's physique is like bordering the best in the world. Right. Yeah. And, I, I see Marcelo as being uh, where James is going to be have a big battle. I. You know what? Let's take a look at Marcelo. I was actually. I think James is going to be better than Marcelo only because, and there's a lot of time still, so it, it may change. But I wasn't super impressed with the last update that he posted. Let's just uh, go to this, see if I can show it to you guys. I think this was the last update he posted. Mm -hmm. It was. It it looks lean. It doesn't. Mm. It doesn't have that thin skin. It was the shot before that with the legs. Let me see. It was like a post before that. This one? Yeah, this is now twenty-five. I guess this means twenty-five days. I don't feel like this is the same condition level of condition as James, but this is there still is twenty five days to sharpen this up. Yeah, they, they they're going to be interesting match up those two, an interesting comparison. Like I mean, that dude's lean. Do you think he's just super flat and not like it's not popping? Like, but he's lean. Look at them calves. Like, look at look at that. He's... Yeah, but I'm looking I'm looking everywhere. Like it looks like there's a thin layer of fat everywhere. I don't mean I don't mean like fat fat. I just mean like it's a thin. There's still yeah, weight. Yeah. There's still weight to lose. Yeah. Like he's not he's not um he's not there yet, in my opinion. Like he's not here. So even from that. there. And even from there, I think James is harder than that right now. I, I yeah, think but, but, not there. but if he gets to here, 
is he have the same thing that Samson has, which is a shape will carry him. Right. That's what's going to be interesting to see. That's what I think. That's why I'm so looking forward to that comparison with him and James. Because they had kind of have the same weak point. Like Marcelo is not a super strong back either, but they both have amazing shape and great legs. So he kind of has a Samson esque physique. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Samson's got a much thicker chest. That's one of the main things that Samson carries over him. And overall size, he's much bigger. Mm. But like this is, ah, fuck you, man. Mm. Fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Son of a bitchin' motherfucker. <laughs> oh, beep, beep, fuck beep. You. Beep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fuck this. I'm done. Okay, let's uh, let's go over our picks. Sorry, guys. I don't know. I'm having technical diff difficulties tonight. Real I gotta quick, go to the bathroom uh, real quick. What you guys are doing now? No, you can't real go, quick. Paul. Pull up, pull up De La Rosa. Okay, so we can't look at his picks. Yeah, so we can only look at him from a distance. So we can look at them small. <laughs> Get in real tight. Okay, <laughs> he looks Don, great. Don De La Rosa. Let's see here. He looked good from the picture I saw. Extreme it also takes up. the worst quality pictures. This is like a fucking yeah, shot. Shot good. this with a fucking potato. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's better. So um, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say he's lean, but dude, I don't know. Like I don't James think, is. I don't think he's lean enough. I don't think he's lean enough because I had I have him in a third right now, and that's one of the changes I was gonna make because I'm like, because his last showing he was. Or whenever it was in, was it Chicago or Tampa? Tampa. Like, yeah. Okay, now we're back to nothing working. Back to that. Yeah, but we got this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? We should take a look at uh, Antoine. Antoine had some wild updates, dude. Yeah, it looks really good. Like, looks really fucking good. That's thin fucking skin, man. The one thing Antoine knows how to do is diet. He doesn't always peak perfectly, but he can get fucking shredded. Listen, that dude's that dude is fucking peeled. Yeah, yeah, that's thin fucking skin, man. Like that, 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 that. Look, see this. Just, see what? See when I see this, Seth. To me, this looks flat. Yeah, that's flat. Yeah, I don't think this is a matter of more conditioning. I think this is a matter of like he's almost there and he's probably a little flat. If Anton can come in and nail it and not like and get full and hard, he's going to be dangerous. But that's the if because I feel I like know he always I has know. a problem peaking. I know it's also the it's also the issue of density and thickness through the core. You guys yeah. will see. Well, his legs are his his legs are so fucking big. Mike, sorry, go ahead. He's at your gym, so you get to see him. No, it's just like an issue he's always like had even when I was helping him and I was trying to like address the issue. It's just like a like a side thickness, like this side shot is like there's a yeah. lot of there's not a lot of projection. There's not a lot of like thickness through the core. Yeah. The so like of... he gets peeled and he's got beautiful shape and beautiful extremities and things like that, but he has a problem with like developing this core. But when he, he saves himself because he poses so well. Yeah. And yeah. he hits things very well and he like he knows how to present his physique and like kind of hide not hide but kind of like yeah, camouflage those weaknesses so yeah. he like he yeah, does a really I, good job but he's really lean right now i see him every day he looks like he's suffering i saw that video he put up his face is fucking in like all like already the detail in his delts i saw in that video he put up today was crazy yeah they're fucking stripped out um let's take a look at justin rodriguez this is one of his most recent updates. I'm always a little hesitant to put Justin somewhere out of the top five, though, only because he brings it in like super sharp at the end. Mm -hmm. But I am seeing a little bit of age taking place, maybe. Age creeping up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. It's great arms, great lats. Stomach looks like it's under control. Legs are good. He is does look flat though, so I don't know. That's the thing, dude. Right now, at this point, this is when dudes are flat. Nothing I know. Really, like everybody's yeah. pulling in. Nobody's really popping. Um, like like you said, he changes so much, Justin. Yeah. From and, and because he's he's on that older side and with the maturity, that dude just. Yeah. 
Rafa don't really see much. Can't really mm -hmm. make a judgment call on this. This is a recent update, I believe. I don't know. You know, I love Rafa's physique, but the only thing that always throws me off is I don't know how big he's going to look next to the other guys. Yeah. Because he's a little, he's kind of like, he's got like a Regan-esque. Yeah. He reminds mm -hmm. me of Regan a little bit, right? He's got a beautiful mm -hmm. shape, but then when you stand him next to a thicker bodybuilder, it kind of like hinders him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the sheets. Seth, are you going to agree to shave your beard? No. You said, <laughs> you said huh? that. Yeah, but the beard is more important to you. His face. Oh, please keep. Who had like to make it count? <laughs> okay, you're, you're saying gonna... if I lose, it's shaving the beard. Okay, you're gonna shave your head. I'll shave my head. Yeah, okay. Hannah will love it. Okay. Uh, all right, Seth. What are you changing? You're taking Della Rosa. <sighs> and we haven't seen anything from Akim either. But Akim, you know, Akim posted one. Let me get, actually see if I can bring it up. He posted one photo, I think, yesterday. His oh, arm, oh, yeah. arm, arm, arms look freaky as fuck, but he was that's all I could see. Always. Uh oh shit. What did I do? Let me see here. Okay, this is it. I follow him and I still don't see his look, shit. Look. This is it. This is all you get. <laughs> How's the face look? Is the face of lead? No. Yeah, but then look at how skin, thin that skin is. He's gonna him. be he's gonna be a fucking freak. He's yeah. a freak. Okay, yeah. not be. Look at this guy. Let's see repping out here. Four plates. Let's take a look at this. Let's do let's do seventy five reps. <laughs> Dude's so strong. <laughs> is he on James level? The strength. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I I, I remember was, him. It was more on display a couple of years ago. Like if you fucking if yeah. you if you scroll back a couple of years. In his Instagram, there was some really, really, really crazy shit he was doing. Six plates for reps, seven yeah. plates for reps. Yeah. I don't know if I put him on James's level. I think James is probably still one notch above. James is that strong. Dude, James is a fucking animal. Because also, it's not just the... Actually, wait a minute. The form 2A, is that what you're going to say? It was the control, yeah. But this is 200-pound yeah. 200, 200 dumbbells here on the low incline. How much is that spotter doing? Looks like he's doing a little. I did those two. Throw up my video, man. Jesus. <laughs> That's impressive, man. Yeah. Jeez. But the thing is, when you see James do that, it looks like he's doing 120 pounds. Yeah. Really... The controller. If he's squatting yeah. eight, if he's squatting eight plates, it looks it looks like he's squatting four. Oh, go, go, go to James' Instagram one day and just scroll through. Like I'm his, going like, to. Yeah, you, yeah, you'll see some crazy fucking shit. Yeah, I didn't know he was. I knew he was strong, but I didn't know he was like that. It's the. It's the. It's not just the strength, though. It's the effortlessness of it. Because we we train. He trained legs with me and Ben and Guy uh, in Texas one one year, like two or three years ago. He was hack squatting like six plates. He just just like a big Viking. He like took his shirt off. It's like this big fucking chest, his belly, put straps on the belt. I don't know if it was seven. It might have been seven or eight plates. I don't remember. And it was, the fucking hack squat was like this. It wasn't even, I don't remember what brand it was, but it wasn't like this. It was like this. And he just lays back and he just starts repping it out. But like no grunting, no like, just like no fucking problem for him. Smooth. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, this is something else. Fucking guy. Okay. Where are we going with De La Rosa? Uh, I'm going to move, I'm going to move, um, I'm going to put James at three. I'm going to put, uh, go copy my pick, Seth. I ain't even look at any, I'm not even looking at anybody's stuff. I'm looking at my own. I'm not I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm covering it all up. Here, watch. You don't have to um, cover it up. I'll go like this. Uh, okay, good. Here we go. Oh, that's you. That's... You, can, you can copy Jay Cutler's. A Cutler, copy Cutler. Copy mine, so. It literally looks like Cutler's right now, almost. Um, uh, hmm. I'm going to put Anton in seven. I'm going to put... Uh... <sighs> 
I'm going to put, uh, oh, that's a tough one there. What are you doing, Summer? I'm going to put, uh, we're talking about girls. Hmm. Come on, Seth. It's a podcast. I'm podcast. thinking, dude. <laughs> you, can't just, you, can't just you guys can it. carry on your other Put time on okay, this guy. Mind? Guy mind? <laughs> okay, go ahead, Paul. Okay, I'm going to uh, swap uh, Raphael with Akeem. Really? Yes. I I hope I'm wrong, but I'm thinking the maybe there's why a reason do you, why, why I do you on. Why do you hope you're wrong? You don't like Raphael? No, that's not what I meant by that. What I meant by that was... Um, I, I'm, I said I, uh, really, and he's saying Raphael is going to come in tighter, and he's going to be able to nudge out that. Yeah, but he this also is, this said is why. he also said, "I hope I'm wrong." So does that mean you like Akeem? Well, I said enough? really. Oh, I wasn't able to finish my my sentence there. Well, oh, the reason what the reason why I say I was hoping I was wrong is because I'm hoping I'm wrong, but maybe the reason Akeem's not putting pictures up is because he's not ready. Yeah, but who do you want to win? Whose physique would I would I think would win at their best? I think. Oh, no, uh, who do you want to win? That's what I'm asking. I don't know either one of them personally, so I don't have an opinion on that. Okay, who's better what looking? I <laughs> for my for my taste, Kim's pretty uh pretty gangster looking. Okay, what else, what else are we doing like here, Paul? Like is that rough, it? Huh? Yeah. Is that, is that it? Uh no. Um, I'm gonna move John up too. Um, swap John with Akeem for me. Okay, I'll come back to me. Yeah, look at this, Mike. I want to. I want to swap Justin and Av. Justin and Av. Mm -hmm. I want to swap James and Rafa. Actually, what? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, and then swap James and Della Rosa. Why don't you stop? Mm. <laughs> well, I just thought about it. I didn't want to confuse you. Okay. There. Okay. Ian. Let's see what Ian's got. He's going to lose for sure. Yeah. Okay. I got <laughs> Samson, Hadi, James, Marcelo, Raphael, Justin, Akeem, Siobhan. Okay. Let's do this. Thinking the same thing as me, that's why. Shut up. Huh. I kind of like that for now. Okay. Mm. Uh put um put uh switch Rafa and Marcelo. Rafa and Marcelo. Uh, switch out um, Justin and Siobhan. Uh, <clears throat> then De La Rosa will go in 10th. So I can have his name on there. Um, switch out Justin and Akim. And then just uh, fuck. Oh man, there's so many ifs and maybes. Six through ten is tough. There's so many ifs and maybes because, dude, if Marcelo doesn't show up and have, and he's not in, he's not in the same shape. He's not right now. It's what twenty five days. Is he able to do it in twenty five days? Pull it together and knock it flat and shallow. Who's that? Marcelo. 
Uh, I, I don't think he's that far. I think 21 days is enough. I don't think he's that far off. I was really impressed with Marcelo's physique in uh, Prague or whatever the fucking show it was at the end of the year. I know I was too, but I don't know if that's what he looked like this far out. Well, he wasn't super hard at that show, so I'm assuming he's going to come to at least that that conditioning or better. Let's see here. <sighs> and a Kim not showing himself is pissing me off right now. <laughs> I already have an idea what Akeem's gonna look like. I don't I don't Akeem never gets super, super hard. So I don't think he's gonna be like shredded. But his size and shape always carries him. Why can't I what's going on with my fucking Instagram? Somebody hack me or what? Oh dude, I didn't say that. Turn your phone off and turn it back on again. Sometimes that helps. Okay. Uh... I turned on my Instagram to go look in the search, and it's Chris Cormier shaking his ass from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, how often do you let Sam out to see the sunlight and eat, etc.? I, I hear you keep never it locked up. Uh, Sam never gets to go anywhere unless I say so. What the? I, you know what? You guys heard about that shit with fucking uh, Greg Valentino and. Yeah, how's that going? <laughs> how's that go over <laughs> <Start the pot. laughs> I'm not like, sure what, 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 like, what did oh. Greg say what did he say <laughs> I didn't hear nothing <laughs> so Greg Valentino decided to go on uh, RX Muscles podcast and make up a story that Hostile won't let Sam talk to Lee Priest even though Sam was just on a, a podcast pod with the fucking guy, just Lee on a podcast with Lee, Pri yeah, just Lee Priest, just Lee Priest yeah. for anybody yeah, else. Just Lee <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the um, yeah, it's you know, people don't understand. Can I just, I just want to clarify this one thing Sam is free to do whatever he fucking wants. We have literally no barriers on Sam and what he does. Sam's not. As far as I know, from what he's told me, he's not super interested in doing podcasts or anything like that. All the kid wants to do is fucking work out and shoot YouTube videos and fucking eat. work on it, work on his YouTube channel and eat. That's all yeah. he wants to do. He's 21. He doesn't give a fuck. And he's got 3 million subscribers. He doesn't care about going on podcasts. He doesn't, it's just not his thing. And I, and you know, just for reference, People have asked me that have podcasts and I've approached Sam and Sam's like, I don't know if it's the right time right now. He just does things on his own time. When he, when he's ready to do podcasts, when he's ready to do workouts with Ronnie Coleman or Lee Priest or everyone's, he'll do it. I have no problem with it. We have nothing in his contract that says he can't do it. So Why I think you grown men stop obsessing about what you know, you know what it, doing. You know what I think? It, you know what I think it <laughs> is though, Mike? Losers. Like... Mike, Mike, you know what I think it is? I think it's because it's so opposite from our industry. Yeah. Normally in our industry, if a 21 year old kid is offered a chance to be on X podcast, that's super popular or yeah. work out with Ronnie Coleman or work out with Lee Pre, They're like, holy fuck, I got to do it right away because I'm never going to get this opportunity again. What they don't understand is Sam is just fucking different. That's what, he, that's what, that's what does, people love about Sam. He does. Well, I was just going to, I was just going to say like, usually it's the complete opposite. People can't right. wait to do Especially things. nowadays. And so I they, don't know. I don't know anything about the kid other than he has, whenever he first started doing all these videos, I was watching them. I watched a couple of them and I'm like, this dude's like, just, he has, it's, it's like a diary. Yeah. He's, it's, his he's, own like, yeah. He's, it's a diary. It's not even like he's yeah. in these YouTube videos for like anything that anybody has ever done. Like right. that kid's a fucking meathead through and through. And I'm like, this mm -hmm. is a diary. It's right. a diary. We're watching right. someone literally like, it's like reading a girl's diary, but it's a bro. It's a meathead. Right. That's right. why it's working. Right. And then I'm like, when I saw that, I'm like, I was like, I bet you this kid, like, dude, he's been approached probably by everybody. What's that? Uh, the one Ev everybody huge podcaster guy. He's a good looking guy. Bumstead was on there not long ago. Chris Williamson. Or yeah, that, like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, I was thinking, I'm like, hey, if Sam Sulek went on that podcast, Sam would probably show up. Yeah. In the same clothes he's wearing in the yeah. YouTube video, yeah, come from the gym. show up and like he, this Chris would probably ask him or, uh, what's the dude's name? I think it's Chris. 
okay, he'd probably ask him some like profound questions about this yeah. and Sam like so like you know, it's about 30 minutes away from my next meal. You know so what, Sam? You know what, Sam? It was funny. You know what I love about this kid? You know, his number one answer to anything I ask him? He's like, it's whatever. That's literally, <laughs> he doesn't yeah. give a fuck. He's like, he's just happy to work out. And, and, yeah. and this, but this is the thing, Seth. I think people can't explain why he's not running to all these other people, like other companies that have reached out to him. And, and I don't mean supplement companies because he has a supplement contract that's exclusive. But yeah. clothing, but clothing companies have reached out to him. Many of them, big, the biggest ones. Yeah. And podcasts have reached out to him, and all these people, are, and people think that because he's not doing it, there must be something going on behind the scenes. It's not. He like just he's got an agenda or something. No, 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 he, not he has an agenda. Like somehow we're holding him back. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. What what people don't understand is he just has his. He's very patient. He's very patient. He does things on his own time whenever he feels like it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And people can't figure it out because it, it's never like that in our industry. He's not ego driven at all, which is such opposite no, of everybody in, today. In our industry, if X company that's, you know, the biggest in the company industry, for example, comes along and says, Paul, I'm going to give you X number of dollars a month, five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever it is. I'm going to give you X grand of money, money a month. It's more than anybody else is going to pay you. Most 21 year olds are like, where the fuck do I sign? Yeah. Give me the clothing. Where do I sign? I'm ready to go. Yeah. he's just not like that yeah. <laughs> he like he likes what he likes and that's fucking it like yeah. anyway so i mean i i i i'm gonna say it's one of the most fucking it is it's the most insane crazy fascinating thing that's happening in the industry today right now you have yeah. someone who has accomplished zero in bodybuilding zero well i mean he's accomplished something with his physique but as far as no, 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 no. competitive bodybuilding it's, yeah what i'm yeah. saying is from yeah. a competitive standpoint something what was putting people on the map the dudes just being a bro right documenting his training sessions and connecting with people so someone that has literally achieved nothing on a stage has become so profound at 21 he just turned 22 years old yeah this is a fucking anomaly that people can't even understand at that point and then we're going to go ahead and say the dude doesn't give a fuck about too much other than lifting weights, eating food, and yeah. like... The Dragon Ball Z, I think he likes that a lot. Like, I think he's, he just, yeah. That's all he look, cares look, about. Look, man, from what I've got... It's right. fucking unbelievable. It's hard to fathom because of everything we have seen. So it's just, it's unique. I, I think it's funny as fuck. From what I've gathered from knowing him for the short while I've known him, he's very patient. He's very patient and he uh, just likes what he likes, which is training. He's not like, he's not looking for it. And he's very, but he's patient, but he's also calculated. Like he's got his own plans. What are you laughing at? He, he's 22, dude. How old are we? How old are we? 45. Yeah. Well, in our, I'm 39. I'm going to be 40. You guys, 40. Listen, my, my daughter's 16, 17. Yeah. If I say something like that and she's like, yeah, it's just whatever. Yeah. She didn't give a fuck. Yeah. He's still, he's 21. He's still, he's still in college, right? Yeah. He's finishing he's a the fucking area. college, bro. He's not thinking yeah. about fucking anything like that, nor should he be. Yeah. I just think it's funny as fuck. I'm like, dude, this is what I'd see with kid. That's kid. That's kid shit. Or he's yeah. having fun. It's a certain yeah. innocence to him. I, I that's, that, that's actually kind of what I like about him is that he's that patient about shit. He doesn't like jump at the first thing that comes at him and like, he's his own fucking man. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. He's a lot admirable to me. He's a lot older than 21 when yeah. I talk to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, on to the next thing. Uh, did you guys watch a million miles away yet? I fuck no, no, it's on my list for it. No, not yet. Though. Fuck, fuck. No, it's been Stop. a busy week. Pam, Sam, Never. Have, you ever, have you ever watched a million miles away? You asking me? Yes. It's still on my list from the last time. Fuck I you, Seth. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, get around hey, to listen, <laughs> I watched the new hunger games movie over the weekend. Oh, it was horrible. Big fan. No, I loved it. you should have watched a million miles away. It's a better movie. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, would you rather have a job you hate but be able to retire comfortably in ten years, or your dream job but have to work until you're seventy-five? I'd take the shit job for a lesser period of time. Yeah, if the money's equal, I'm taking the ten-year job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But fuck that. You what can... was the question again? Say it again. Would you rather retire comfortably in ten years uh, mm -hmm. with a job you hate? Or have your dream dream job, but work until you're 75. How how retired am I? Like, am I fucking loaded? 
you're retired. You don't have to work ever again. Says comfortably. Yeah, retire comfortably. Yep. So I'm saying you're well off. I just worked till I'm 75. What else am I going to do? <laughs> really? I'm fucking bored here. Yeah. What do you mean? We can go do I like working. We can do shrooms and blow and drink. And... That's why I wanted that's why I just wanted to keep working. You're gonna kill me. Yeah. <laughs> uh would you rather lose all of the money you earned this year or lose all the memories you've gained this year? I'd rather fuck. That's tough because if I lose all the money I earned this year, I'm gonna live on the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's too hard. I can't live on the street. I can make new memories. So all the money you made it. The, the it's only been year, a month. It it's only been a month. Been oh, a yeah, month. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah no yeah, memories for Fuck sure. Fuck memories. Yeah, we got great yeah, memories well, already. We had Fuck really, January. We had a really good time a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, UFC was awesome. Yeah, we'll go again. Don't worry. We'll remember yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, Fuad, will you and James do the chicken nugget challenge at the Arnold's? Uh, James is up for it. Oh. Um. When will you be starting your streaming service for all the pro shows? Seth, you want to partner with me on this? We'll make a ton of money. What are you doing? I want to make a streaming service for the IFBB. Mm -hmm. But without them maybe knowing. We can, maybe yeah. we, we could. The secret <laughs> cameras. <laughs> we can, like I mean, we can talk movies. off camera about that subject. I'd like to. Okay, so this was an idea I had. I'm sure other people have had before. But yeah. kind of like the UFC has a has a has an app and a streaming service. Mm-hmm. Right now, promoters are charging like 30, 40, 50 bucks a pro show for uh, pay per view. Okay. I'm like, what if you just did like 10 bucks a month? You get all of the pro, sh all of the pro shows, including the Olympia and the Arnold. Mm. And we stream all of them. We have a camera crew. They go to all the fucking pro shows. We make sure they're good live streams so they're not cutting in and out. We can even add a commentator so that, like, kind of like a Joe Rogan, we have the same commentator at every show. So people get familiar with the person like Ian would do it or something, or like somebody that's really good at commentating, really good at script. Me and Ian might do it together, whatever. Um, or me, you and Ian or whatever, right? We'd get like the right people to do every show so that people get really familiar and with the personalities. And it'd be just like the UFC streaming service. You'd have the same commentator. You'd have a, the same camera crew at every show, or you'd have a group of camera crews that you'd use for specific regions. And you just promote it on an app. I think you can make more money too doing amateur shows, offering an amateur side to that. Well, the other thing is you could do amateur shows, you could do pro shows. And if you used, did it like the UFC app, you could do, even do stuff like not cribs, but stuff like cribs where you have like, you know, content. You, like UFC embedded where you have like yeah, yeah. specific content or you have like, um, you could also get advertisers to pay into it to promote mm -hmm. their, their supplement brands or clothing brands, whatever. Do you do you know how many uh, pay-per-views were purchased for the other, some of the other shows? Do you have, I have, I have an idea for the Arnolds and stuff. You do? But the thing is, it, it's not that they're making big money, but the difference yeah. is, I think, I think if you made it like nine ninety nine a month, more people would sign up and they would just be on all year long with all the pro shows. They don't have to so, go in. Because a lot of times, man, these people can't even find the fucking links. Right. I, I know. I've, I've had yeah. trouble in some of the shows. A lot yeah. of times these people are like, oh, I want to watch the pro show. Do you know where the link is? I'm like, no, I don't know where the fuck it is either. Yeah. So, like, if there was a dedicated, like, you know, we went to the IFBB, we said, look, we want to do this, blah, blah, blah. Will you let us, will you talk to the promoters? We can give the promoters, like, a little side fee or something. Um, and to see if you could do it. Because the fucking IFBB doesn't have anything like that. Well, I think especially, especially if you could fill other content with it too, Fuad, I think you could really sell that idea to sponsors. Oh, no, this too. is what I mean. Like, between me and Seth, we know everybody in the fucking IFBB. Yeah. So, it's like, if we did it, we could be like, okay. Every time there's a show, we're going to send somebody to do, like, I would go visit James, and we would get some a couple days worth of content, mm -hmm. him eating, him training, kind of like Mitsuru used to do for the mm -hmm. battle, battle for the Olympias. Mm -hmm. We would have somebody that would go meet these people at their homes. Hey, let me train with you for a couple days. You know, see what you're eating, see what you're doing. So there would be, like, it would be all this content, and also it would feed back to those people's personal YouTube channels. But we would also have the show, the show stuff. You know, we could have coaches on to talk about different things. Like, there's so many. You could incorporate some of the podcasts into the fucking thing too. Yeah, you make it like a platform almost. It would be a platform with everything. It, pod, I was just going to say it yeah. wouldn't. It wouldn't just be a streaming service. It no. would be an entire platform. Well, it would be a streaming service. Right. It would be everything. Body, but not body. just, not yeah. just a right. streaming yeah. service. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a great idea. 
You know what I mean? And if you had enough subscribers, you could, you know, you'd all the companies in the industry would be like, yeah, we want to advertise. Right. And that would pay for a lot of like the back end stuff, like paying video crews to fly places here and there and like all that shit. Yep. Mm. All right. So we'll, we'll bang our heads against the wall for a little while. See if we can come up with mm -hmm. Unless somebody hears us and it steals the idea and does it before us. It's a tough idea to execute, dude. That's I know, a lot of work. I, I know it is. I know it is. Yeah. It's a lot of upfront costs too. Uh, okay. Sam's biggest cycle. I don't. Do people? Sam's biggest cycle. I have fucking. Just make no one idea. up. Make one yeah. up right now. <laughs> no, yeah, tell everybody. Yeah. Make people one take two hundred milligrams of Halo. And <laughs> people will take it fucking seriously. Okay. Uh, yeah. Out of Cedric, Luke, and Dallas, who could have been a Mister O if they reached their full potential? Probably all three. I'm going to say all three. And out of the three, that's tough. Cedric was phenomenal. I think Cedric. Luke was, Luke. Luke was Luke was fucking only two years into his career when he fucking took second at the Arnold. Luke was one of my most was one of my favorite most favorite physiques. Uh, the the uh, the twisted leg front lat. Mm -hmm. front lat. You can nail that shot, dude. It's a but tough you could shot. even you could even make a case for Dallas because yeah. he was very proportionate for a big guy. Mm -hmm. but Dallas was a freak. Yeah, that's a really sleeping. that's a really tough call, man. All three of those guys are actually. And this is going to sound really bad. Please, people, don't take it the wrong way. But all three of those guys are better than Hardy and Derek. I'm sorry, but like at a hundred percent, Cedric, Luke, and Derek would have been ahead of Hardy and Derek this year. Like that's you're that, like you're talking that's about at their best, at their fullest potential. Yeah, at their fullest potential. Yeah. I'm not talking about I as agree. they were. Like Cedric, Cedric was. 280 pounds on stage with amazing shape, but he couldn't get in shape. So if he got in shape, where was he? Mm -hmm. Then you had Luke, who was like really coming on to filling out his body the way it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Small waist, had a vacuum. If he built up his legs a little bit more, with the he guys 260 pounds on stage in his second year or third year in bodybuilding, who's going to beat that? Mm -hmm. Then you have Dallas, who was like, who the fuck knows how big on stage, a tall guy. That's perfectly proportionate okay. and just needed better conditioning. And symmetrical, yeah, and, and aesthetic. Like, you're talking. And it's about... a bold. It's a bold statement because, like, it's you know, ifs and maybes. I know, but, I know, but but I think I mean I I I'm it's that's part of this whole industry that sucks is that all three of those guys are gone with what they could have did to grow the sport. But I think Cedric, uh, dude, that motherfucker, he was one of. Dude, you know how close you and Cedric were, and I was the same way with them. I, uh, that dude, if he could have nailed it every time, he would have been yeah, he would have been top motherfucker. I uh, I also have to preface my statement with I was good friends with Cedric and Luke, so apologize if my bias is coming through. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, yeah. Just, just shit. <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. If we were more advanced and informed than ever before, then why do we have the highest rate of obesity, cancer, heart problems, not to mention depression? Because we're lazier than ever. I'm going to say convenience is the problem. Mm, look at you. Technology. What? Look what? at you. What, you know I have like two no, brain cells? I agree. That's two brain cells throw up together? <laughs> That's an <laughs> incredible okay. statement. He's like, hey, you're kind of smart. <laughs> the fact that like you said convenience, you didn't say the food. You didn't. You didn't go after exactly what these people were baiting for. Is all this fucking bullshit on the line? It's the fact that people just aren't taking into consideration how difficult it is to take into consideration your fucking health. Like they're I know, also take, like, I'm not they're also waiting for the next shit. hack. What's they're that? For the, they're also waiting for the next hack or the next fucking breakthrough shortcut. It's going to let them be the shortcut, right? Yeah. But again, absolutely con con convenience, right? It's like, yeah. Um, yeah. Think about how easy it is to eat shitty food now. <laughs> Like between Uber, than ever. between Uber Eats, frozen dinners, fucking all the processed shit that's on the shelves. Who the fuck is cooking like our mothers did? I don't know if your guys' mothers did, but my mother was like, everything was cooked from scratch. Everything. Mm -hmm. She was a stay-at-home mom. That's what she did. Mm -hmm. So, who but the, the fuck, convenience who the of everything fuck? of even <laughs> like even like ordering food in the convenience, yeah, 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 of, all that, like just yeah. every everything like the convenience of like uh, societal norms of like. 
not actually having to work so hard to make sure you can still eat and survive in a sense. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just, it chalks him up in every, in every category of that. You know, one of the mm -hmm. things, so he mentioned obesity, cancer, heart problems, not to mention depression. To me, all of those things, maybe not cancer because cancer is more of a, uh, should be, could be more hereditary, but the rest of them, including, I'm sorry, but I'm, I said this earlier in the podcast, depression, fucking all that shit's tied to food, in my opinion. When I eat, like I have anxiety. I, don't, I wouldn't say I have depression, maybe situational, less clinical. But I know when I'm eating fucking garbage, my life mentally is a wreck. I'm just I'm just a wreck. Like moods are all over the place. Depression's all over the place. Anxiety's all over the place. So everything he's saying is like food related in my opinion. But food anyway. and lifestyle. Food and lifestyle, yeah. The convenient lifestyle. Yeah. Like, the technology on. brings that on a lot. On and, and, the, and sedentary. Yeah. Uh, Sam, uh, not Sam. Fuck. What am I? Seth. Mm -hmm. Bef before we go, you want to finish this and then we'll do one more question? Mm. Or is this finished for you right now? I'm, I'm, I'm good with it right now. I'll roll with it. Okay. That's You're going to shave your head. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. One last question. Which decade in the past hundred years do you think had the best style? Fashion, music, ads, etc. 90s. 70s. Whenever I whenever whenever I watch Scarface or like any narcos movie, I'm like, fuck, that was the best era. The butterfly collars and the yeah. bell bottom pants. The dancing yeah. was cooler. The nightclubs were cooler. Everyone was just doing cocaine everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And having sex everywhere. <laughs> People who watch this podcast think they're gonna think I'm serious. I just do blow like every fucking day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who had some cocaine? <laughs> no, I just that's think on my, that's on my desk right now. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, you know, you know why? Because I feel like the 70s was the so many firsts. Like the first mm. bodybuilding explosion, the first like clubs became really cool. Like there's a lot of good mm. music. A lot of good music came in the 70s. Like yeah, I just I shifted, think out, little... shifted out of that hippie shit, you know. <laughs> 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 no, I just I don't know. For me, anyway, Seth, what do you think? I don't know. The seventies were pretty cool. I love Dazed and Confused. Super cool movie. Um, <laughs> I think I don't know. I from an advertisement standpoint, dude. I think old school cigarette and alcohol ads are the 80? coolest fucking oh, ads of all time. Like eighties or nineties? Because eighties is pretty even fucking dipping, cool. Even dipping into the seventies, yeah. the seventies and eighties, yeah. Mar yeah. like you got the, uh, fucking Marlboro Man, you got Joe Camel, you got yeah. like <laughs> I don't know the Winston Cup. Yeah, you have Houston. all these cool like degenerate redneck. Yeah, the uh, what was it? The Bush Five Hundred series. You like, don't smoke. Remember dude. the Camel. Miss Seth, yeah, smoke? Joe, Joe Camel. Huh? Remember the wait, Seth? Do you smoke? No, no, not anymore. I mean, I like listen. I loved cigarettes. I fucking. Oh, you did? Off. I didn't oh, know that. Yeah, yeah, I loved cigarettes. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> You're much friends. We, like, we like them too. <laughs> how long? How long has it been since you had a cigarette? Ah, uh, dude, it's been years. Really? Like, uh, ten, like ten years or more? Oh no, no, actually, I had one last year when we went golfing. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Had one when I went golf. I like smoking cigars. I love like I love cigarettes. What's your favorite? I... <laughs> what's your favorite cigar? Are you a connoisseur? Uh, yeah. I mean, I like um, right now. My go-to is Rocky Patel Decade. Like that's good any time of day. Um, the Rocky Patel uh, 60th anniversary is a good cigar. Um, I the told... Placencias. Have you had any Placencias? I was just gonna tell you. Mike's friend Tom was asking me about my cigars that I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when I told him, he said that fucking cigar is shit. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> what was it? I fucking came across these cigars. They're called Dead. I think they're called Dead Acid or something like that. Dead Acid. Okay. I, I think they're called Dead Acid, and they're like they're they're like flavored, but not like gay flavored. Sure. Just like, <laughs> just like sweet. It's like a normal cigar like this. Yeah. But it's got like a nice sweet taste to it. Yeah. The, the, uh, sweet Janes. Do you ever have any of those? No. They're really good. They're a sweeter cigar too. Okay. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I told. Good. Well, I told uh, Tom. <laughs> he's like, that cigar is garbage. You fucking don't know shit. I was like, I don't know shit. <laughs> like, I just I just like them, dude. Fuck you. I just like cigars. Don't bug me. I'm not a fucking connoisseur. Uh, yeah. Drew Estate. That's it. Acid. Oh, Drew Estate. That's a good smoke. 
Acid Limited. Here, let me share it with you so you know what I'm talking about. Acid Limited by Drew Estate. That's what it's called. Well, I don't know where I got fucking dead acid from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is it. Drew, Drew Estate's a, a great brand. Yeah, uh, they... Uh, oh, they're acid cigars. Yeah, acid cigars. Dude, I don't know exactly which one it was, but the fucking... They were amazing. Anyway, so you love cigarettes. Yeah, I was uh, back back <laughs> back in the day. It was just I chewed it for a little bit, but I just preferred cigarettes. Like, I don't know. I thought it was cool. Like, I thought the ads were cool. And then dudes in my dad's shop, like growing up when I was like 13, 14, 15, the dude smoked c- cigarettes on like breaks. So like whenever I got like 16 years old, they were like, dude, you want to smoke? Because I was working there. I'm like, yeah, can I yeah. bum a smoke? And I started smoking cigarettes and I thought it was cool. And you started, know, started, six, I, you started 16. Oh, yeah. Like I was, I mean, I worked in my dad's wood shop. I didn't work with my dad. I worked with the degenerates in the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like <laughs> that's how I became me. Yeah. So we'd be, I'd work 40, 50 hours a week with these dudes. And then on break, we'd smoke cigarettes. And then on Fridays, they'd throw me beers. Mm. So I was just, that's how I grew up. Yeah. I, started, and, smoking, uh, I yeah. started smoking in high school and then I never stopped. I really smoked, yeah. I smoked all through university i think was the worst because we used to sit we used to sit and drink coffee and smoke for like yeah. and just study but not really study smoke cigarettes just, <laughs> huh? you smoke cigarettes i never smoked weed well i smoked weed in high school a little bit but it was cigarettes i started smoking cigarettes at 14 i didn't know that oh well, yeah and then i you just, menthol guy no, fuck that shit. That's <laughs> for, 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 for gay guys. Show them the picture of us all smoking cigarettes on your birthday. We, 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 we have these mushroom trips. So. I don't know where the fuck it is, man. I can't find it right now. Anyway. Man, but, I yeah. didn't know that. Well, look, it's, it's, it. it's not a great habit, but it's like very minimal. It's like, yeah, one or two, one or two a day. Really? It's, it's a, I, I will say like, for me, it's a, it's a massive, uh, like an oral fixation. Like if I, whenever I, whenever I stopped, uh, like smoking cigarettes, it just became immediately like having snacks in the car. Cause I loved my morning coffee. <laughs> <There's that. laughs> you got him, you got him, smoke him. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke anything. Because I, me, I loved, I loved my morning, my morning coffee and cigarette on my way to work. I just yeah. fucking. Oh, that's the best. So look, this is a, <laughs> this is a thing called uh, fume. I don't know why I'm doing advertisements for them. They're supposed, they're supposed to be paying me, but they're not. This is a, a, a thing called fume, and it's supposed to, if you have an oral fixation like Seth, other than sucking cock. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's all. <laughs> Can't do that everywhere. It's like a one hitter. You can, you can smoke this thing, and it like vape. Yeah, but it's got like a, I don't know what the flavor is. It's almost like a fucking um, this like, thing. A, like fruit, like a this tea tree, thing. like it's like a tea tree oil almost. I don't. Uh, yeah, that I don't give levels. A fuck what anybody says. There's nothing. Those vapes don't equate. They Not don't true equate for me. Not true. They I don't. Was, okay, they don't most of the time, but I was I was super fucked up at the UFC. <laughs> drunk drunk as shit. I remember. But you weren't allowed to leave the box because if you left, they were gonna let you back in. I don't think you're supposed to vape either. So when I drink, I smoke. And then I'm like, oh, I can't go outside. So Ian threw me a vape. So all night long I was just like like vaping fucking <laughs> I must have emptied the cartridge in one night. <laughs> so they have their they have their places anyway is what i'm saying yeah <laughs> yeah but if, like you can't smoke all right so 70s pick up for a seth. pack on the way home yeah <laughs> Se- 70s 80s for seth yeah Se- 70s for me paul you said 90s 90s that's my mike era. mike I'd say 70s or even 50s are cool man when they had like those big cars and yeah slick back hair and fucking rockabilly shit I couldn't Can't. do the fifties though because I'm brown, so people would have probably kicked the shit out of me all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you weren't accepted. Boy. You wouldn't been accepted yet for it. Get out of here, Packy. So I have to fucking. So seventies better for me. You're a little more enlightened. I could probably hang out. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, uh, okay, Seth. We've been on for a while. You wanna? You want to let's lead, let Paul lead us off with one of his prayers. Well, I'm in the presence of greatness from what I hear no. when it comes to prayer makers. I think no. Seth, I think Seth wants to know what your prayer, what your <laughs> well, prayers like. Mine are very simple. Mine are very simple, Seth. I uh, saw your masterpiece and I uh, 
I, well, that's I, I, you know why though but that's because seth's came from the heart that's why oh, seth's yeah. a spiritual try, man try yours, and come from the heart for once paul yeah paul yours yours are okay. very manufactured it'd be nice just to you know manufactured what, yeah, I take your mind, it's your mind out of the gutter and do a real prayer. I'd, I'd like to hear you give something like that you really care about for once. Something I care about. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's empty. Weed. Okay. 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 Thank okay. God for my mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was Bower Heads. All right. Well, Bower Heads. Dear leader, um, as we enter this. Uh, last last part of the winter season here um we may be faced with some tough times ahead um why i don't know just you know just, just in case we, <laughs> i don't know just in I case uh why I'm, are you I'm wishing just, that upon just, me just try and just try to cover all my bases here okay please. okay go ahead Put sorry the try to on us okay, go ahead. some strength here okay go ahead so uh like i was saying um but grant us some strength to uh, get through whatever the uh foreseeable future may throw our way and um just keep doing our best every day and um Keep uh, our bonds solid and our uh, our women tight, and um, <laughs> keep on rocking in the free world. <laughs> All right, amen. Amen. All right, man. All right, boys. Uh, thank you, Seth. We'll. Uh, I'm sure. As we'll always, up. gentlemen. Thank you. I'm sure. Nice we'll see you, Seth. Soon. See you guys. Hey, guys. Have a good night. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks, see you, guys. Mike.